The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. <laughs> that was High Ride and Handsome, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after a holiday of 13 weeks, we bring you a man whose vacation is over, and so is yours, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you. Gee, I can't be that good. <laughs> As you know, again, this is Jack Benny talking, full of pep and raring to go. You know, Don, it feels so good to be back in the studio with the old gang. Yeah, I'm even happy to see this silly old microphone. Hello, Mike. Hello, Jack. Guy. <laughs> well, Don, I don't know whether I ought to tell you this or not, but on my 13 weeks vacation, I don't know of anyone I've missed as much as you. Well, thanks, Jack. I've missed you, too. Yeah, I'm sure glad to see you. Gee, if you were already young, I'd kiss you. <laughs> but really, Don, I've never seen you in better shape. You look so rested. Well, so do you, Jack. And you you look so healthy. Oh, you do, too, Jack. <laughs> and you, you look so handsome. Hmm. Did you hear me, Don? Yes, yes, thanks. Oh, oh. <laughs> I guess I went too far there. <laughs> but now, Jack, tell me all about your trip to Europe. Did you have a good time? Don, I had the most marvelous time I've ever had in my life. It was more fun than a barrel of monkeys. And you know what they are. Oh, I'll say. <laughs> I tell you, Don, there's nothing like an ocean voyage for complete relaxation. I was so relaxed, I didn't eat for four days. <laughs> but it was great, though, really. 3,000 miles on the open sea. Weren't you scared? Well, what's there to be a scared of? You're on a big ocean liner. What could happen? Well, for one thing, the boat might sink. Oh, that's silly. I didn't even think of it. Well, that boat trip must have been good for you. You certainly put on a lot of weight. I did? Yes, yes, especially around your waist. Around my... Oh, darn it, I forgot to take off my life belt. <laughs> now, isn't that awful? Well, it's funny you never noticed it. Haven't you taken a bath? Yes, and I was wondering why I kept floating out of the tub. <laughs> well, I, really, I should have guessed. But well, now, uh, Jack, what about Europe? Uh, what did you do and where did you go? Oh, I went all over. I was in England, France, Italy... But the loveliest place I've ever seen in my life is Switzerland. What scenery. Beautiful, huh? Well, Don, it's a second Lake Arrowhead. <laughs> and those mountains, I just can't describe them. Oh, yes, I've heard the Alps are gorgeous. Oh, they are. They, well, Don, when I think of them, I could just yodel. <laughs> really, you should see those Alps with rippling streams and wildflowers blooming and cheese growing all over the place. Oh. You know, I've often wondered about that. Is there really so much cheese in Switzerland? Is there? Well, when a good rat dies, that's where he goes. <laughs> but of course, Don, there's only one place to really have fun, and that's Paris. So they say. Uh, how did Paris strike you, Jack? Right between the eyes, Don. <laughs> I had such a wild time, I had to sleep in a straitjacket. And what do you think I bumped into over there? Who? Mary. She went to Europe, too. The little copycat. <laughs> she was mad about Paris. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jack. Glad to see you back again. <laughs> Boy, you look grand. You look good, Phil. Really, it's, it, it's sure good to see you, Phil. I don't know of anyone I've missed as much as you. Thanks, Jack. Did you have a nice vacation, Phil? Uh, what'd you do this summer? Well, I put my band in mothballs. Yes. And then I went down to Texas on a little fishing trip. Fishing? Did you have any luck? Swell. I caught a 110-pound blonde in Galveston. <laughs> well, well, that, that was luck. Huh? Yeah, but her father was the game warden, so I had to throw her back. <laughs> Oh, that's too bad. Say, uh, Jack, I heard you telling Don about Europe. Did you make the trip alone? No, Phil. I went over with an uncle of mine. He's a swell fellow, but the only trouble is he drinks a lot. You oh. know, he... Uh, well, at least you had company, somebody to talk to. Oh, yes, yes. You can understand hiccups. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My uncle was the only passenger that was seasick and didn't know it. <laughs> What a guy, huh? I meant to ask you, Jack, uh, what boat did you go over on? Uh, the Normandy. You ought to see it, Phil. It's gigantic. Oh, what a boat. Looks like Don Wilson with funnel. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. And Phil, <laughs> Phil, who do you think was on the same boat? Who? Marlene Dietrich. Right on the same boat. What no a girl. No kidding. And would you believe it, Phil, her cabin was only 20 miles from mine. <laughs> 
And I got bunions to prove it. <laughs> hey, fellas. Hey, fellas, look. Look who's here. Uh, bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. It's Tom and Tally Boots, they swap. Glad to see you. Well, hello, Mary. Uh, Marie to you guys. Oh. Mary, cut out that French. You're back home now, you know. Gee, Mary, you're looking swell. Did you have any fun in Paris? Uh, oui, oui. Oui, oui. She was in the stores all the time over there. Oh, I bet you did a lot of shopping, huh, Mary? Uh, oui, oui. Oui, oui. Did you meet any cute fellas? Woo, woo. <laughs> now, stop showing off. I'm glad you didn't make the trip with me. So am I. What boat did you go over on? The Queen Mary Livingston. The Queen Mary Livingston? Yes, the captain told me I could say that. Oh, oh, I mean. Oh, say, fellas, before I forget, I brought you all a little present from Paris. You did? What is it, Mary? Perfume. Perfume? Oh, just what we needed. Speak for yourself, Phil. Uh, come here, Don. Here's your bottle. It's called A Kiss in the Dark. Oh, thanks, Mary. And here's yours, Phil. It's called Love Sardinia. Well, hmm, quite romantic. What's mine, Mary? Dracula's Dream. <laughs> it's a fine name for a perfume. It also kills ants. <laughs> well, a double header, some stuff. Hey, hey! Mary, wait a minute. The bottle you gave me has a nipple on it. Oh, I gave you Kenny. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, Mary, it was nice of you to bring us perfume. Oh, and that's not all. You know what I brought for our audience? What? A poem. A poem. Well, that ought to smell, too. (laughs) (laughs) Gee, I pulled the line and had to laugh myself. (laughs) You hear that, folks? A poem. You want to hear it? You want to hear it? Well, boys, looks like we're outnumbered. Uh, what's the title of it, Mary? Uh, Paris in the Spring. Paris in the... <laughs> Paris in the Spring? Uh, yeah, I wrote it in bed. Oh, oh. Well, let's hear it. All right. <coughs> <coughs> I've just returned from dear old Paris, where life is gay and there no carrots. Ooh. Yeah. Some call it Paris, some Paris. Now, which is right? I'm up a tree. Oh, up a tree. I'm doing the big apple. Oh, oh. Uh, With your good old Eiffel Tower, wear your friends you meet and say Bon Jour. And people poor and people rich, ride across your London Bridge. London Bridge. London Bridge is in London. Uh, Well, I was there, too. Oh, oh. I adore you, Paris, France, where girls buy hats and men buy trousers. Trousers? All right, pants. Oh. And taxi cabs, they honk and rattle. The drivers look, but do not tattle. Mary. Marie, do you? Oh. Your onion soup is so delish, it puts you in a swell condition. Hmm. And the whole world shouts hurrah for your patty, fooey gras. Mary, that's patty foie gras. It's fooey. I didn't like it. <laughs> well, I don't like the whole poem. Hey, Harris! What? People play, Phil. Merci beaucoup. Uh, that was Stop, You're Breaking My Heart from Artists and Models. <clears throat> uh, played by, um... Played by Phil Harris and his... <laughs> played by Phil Harris and his augmented orchestra. And, Phil, you're right back in form again. Believe me, that number sounded plenty good. You think that's something? Wait till we learn it. Oh. <laughs> Now, the way, Phil, I noticed that you've enlarged your orchestra quite a bit this season, haven't you? Yes, I added three violins and a cement mixer. Well, that's what I like. Something concrete in there, you know. Gee, there those fiddles, those three fiddles. You know, I was watching that middle fellow in particular. He seems to uh, employ the same technique on the violin that I do. I know I'm letting him go tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, do that, do that, Phil. Now, look, Phil, I don't want to, of course, I... I don't want to tell you your business, you know, but I do think that those three violinists ought to have strings on their instruments, don't you? They they should, certainly. Well, I told them that, and they talked me out of it. <laughs> and you shouldn't be so easily swayed. But there's no question about it, Phil. Your orchestra has an added quality. What did you think of the last number, Mary? The cement mixer wasn't loud enough. Well, it's tired. It just finished a symphonic engagement at Boulder Dam. <laughs> Hey, Jack, look. Look who just came in. Who? I'll bite who? Candy. Oh, it's me. Hello, everybody. Well, 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 cutie. 
Hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack, old boy. Old boy? Well, it's another year. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, you're looking swell, Kenny. You really are. I shouldn't tell you this, but uh, during my vacation in Europe, Kenny, I don't know of anyone I've missed as much as you. Thanks, really. Jack. Next year, you can take me with you. No, I'd rather miss you, Kenny. <laughs> Gee, I bet you had a swell time in Europe, Jack. You look so tan and dissipated. Well, Kenny, you should have been there. You really... Did you get that postcard I sent you from Paris? Did I? Wow! Kenny, that was a picture of a museum. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Jack, Jack, have you noticed how much Kenny has grown this summer? That's right, Don. He's getting to be a real young man, isn't he? Gee. Isn't he, Mary, huh? He sure is, and he's better looking, too. Gosh, do you mean that, Mary? Uh-huh. Then give me a kiss. Oh, a fast worker, too, huh? Go ahead, Mary. You haven't seen Kelly all summer. Go ahead. Huh? Oh, I don't want a kiss, huh? Go on. No. Oh, come on, Mary. Give him a kiss. What have you got to lose? My gum. <laughs> now you can get another stick. Come oh, on, Mary. Mary. Be a come, come on. Oh, it's only kiss. Kenny. Come on, give him a kiss. No, no, he'll tell everybody. He will not. I will, too. <laughs> now, isn't that awful? Come on, Mary, quit stalling. You better hurry up or I'll get out of the mood. <laughs> look, look, look who's in the mood. Look. Oh, all right. Come on, Kenny, brace yourself. All set. All right, camera. <laughs> oh, well, how was it, Mary? He has grown. <laughs> <laughs> there, you see? Let's do it again. Oh, no, that's enough. Save your energy for your song. Uh, what are you going to sing tonight, Kenny? Well, as soon as I get my breath, I'm going to sing Remember Me. Well, that's swell. Oh, wait a minute, Kenny. Just a second. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I want to take this opportunity of telling you how glad I am to see you back on the air. Well, well, thanks. I don't know of anyone I've missed as much as me. Goodbye. <laughs> I knew 13 weeks was unlucky. Sing, Kenny. <laughs> Remember me from Mr. Dodd Takes the Air, sung by Kenny Baker, the great lover of the Jello program. <laughs> and Kenny, your voice is better than ever. Oh, it certainly is, Kenny. Really, Kenny, your voice has improved tremendously. Yes, sir. Well, this may sound hammy, but but I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Mary. Mary, why don't you give Kenny his present? Oh, yes, I nearly forgot. Here, Kenny, I brought you something from Paris. Just a little remembrance. Oh, boy, what is it? Well, it's sweet and it's liquid, and you have to spray it on you. Now, what is it? A kiss. No, it's perfume. Oh, shucks. Watch your language, son. <laughs> now, run away, both of you kids. we got things to do around here. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the feature attraction of our opening program, we are going to present the first in a series of highly dramatic offerings. Hey, no, pardon me. Come in. Well, well. Hiya, bud. <laughs> today. Gee, you're certainly getting surprised. Well, Andy, I'm glad to see you. Me too. Gee, the whole gang's here. Yeah, same voice, too. Yep, well, Andy. <laughs> Andy, how's your ma and pa and the cows and the chickens and... Oh, they're fine, Buck. They're all sitting around the radio listening in. Well, that's interesting. Of course, I never got a fan letter from a cow. You know. <laughs> well, no moose is good moose. Ooh, ooh. Go back to sleep, Mary. You said it, huh? We got any more cow jokes, Andy? No, I guess we milked them. Well, Andy, what'd you do this summer? Have a nice vacation? Sure did. I took a boat and went over to Catalina Island. Catalina Island? Well, that wasn't much of a trip. Why didn't you come to Europe with me? What for? I can get just as sick in two hours as you can in five days. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Boy, just barely made that one. <laughs> I know, but there's nothing like Paris. Say, hey, Andy, did you get that picture postcard of the Eiffel Tower I sent you? Yes, sir. Sure got pretty legs, ain't it? <laughs> yes, if you like architecture. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I'd have been over in Paris with you, though. I'd like to meet some of them cute mademoiselles. Mademoiselles? Huh? Yeah. But, Andy, you can't talk French. Who wants to talk? <laughs> 
Well, you ought to make that trip sometime, Andy. No kidding. Uh, not me. It's too darn dangerous. The boat might sink. No, there's nothing to be afraid of, is there, Mary? Of course not. You see? Jack wore curls in case they yell women and children first. <laughs> Traveling incognito. Say, Andy, I brought you something from Paris, too. You did? What is it? Perfume. It's called Eau de la Fleur de la Goo. De la Goo? Doggone, it sure smells sweet. I'm glad you like it. (laughs) Do you mind if I pour some on the hogs? They need it worse than I do. (laughs) Now, don't go wasting it. Well, Andy, as long as you're here tonight, you better as well join us. We're going to put on a little play. (laughs) Okay, bud. Better get into it, too. We haven't got much time, me being nervous and everything. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our first dramatic offering of the season, we are going to present... Oh, now what? Come in. Hey, Jack. Jack, look. Look who walked in. Well, this is a surprise. Abe Lyman, of all people. Hello, Jack. Can I see you a minute? Sure, sure. Oh, sure. Oh, you, you remember Abe Lyman. His band was with us in New York last winter. Well, I'm glad to see Abe. Gee, this is a surprise. Abe, what's on your mind? Uh, what do you want to see me about? Well, it's a little personal, Jack, and I'd rather keep it private. Well, come on, Abe, out with it. I mean, there's no secrets around here. Well, look, Jack, this is your first program of the new season, isn't it? Yes. And I noticed that you're using Phil Harris's band. Well, yes, Abe. What about it? Well, last winter, well, while we were in New York, you promised to use my band. I did? Yeah, and I got a letter to prove it, too. Now, look, Abe. But... What's the trouble, Jack? Oh, nothing, Phil. Only last winter when we went east, Abe did one broadcast for me. I did three. I got paid for one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's neither here nor there. I got Phil Harris signed up for the season. Besides, it's no place to discuss business. Well, what about that letter you sent me? Well, I wrote it when I was mad at Phil. Anyway, I didn't think you could read. Well, my <laughs> uncle can. <laughs> Now, look, Abe, I don't care about your uncle. I had enough grief with you in New York, so lay off. Phil Harris was all set, and he went to a lot of trouble augmenting his orchestra. He even got a cement mixer. That's nothing. I got a steamroller in my band. <laughs> steamroller? Well, I don't believe it. You will when I run over you. <laughs> all I know is my band is going to be on your program, or you'll be number one on my hit parade. <laughs> now, look here, Abe. Are you trying to intimidate me? What? Are you trying to intimidate me? I don't know. <laughs> Well, call your uncle and find out. I wouldn't waste a nickel on that rat. It's a fine place to come in and start an argument. Jack, why don't you and Abe go out in the hall where you can be alone? Think I'm crazy? <laughs> now, listen, Abe, we can talk this over some other time. I'm talking it over right now. Yeah. You stay out of this, Kenny. <laughs> well, I had enough of this, and I'm not going to waste any more time arguing. Oh, you're not, huh? Hey there, Lyman, why don't you leave Buck alone? Get away from me, Divine, or I'll clear your throat. Watch out, Andy. I hope I come out of baritone. It's a fine thing to happen on my first program. Say, Jack, I feel kind of embarrassed about this. I, oh, I didn't you're know. not to blame, Phil. No, Phil, it's not your fault. Of course not. Now, let's drop all of this and go back to where we were. Okay, give me another kiss, Mary. <laughs> well, I'm glad the subject has changed. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight... Go away, Abe. Uh, we will present a dramatic offering... You that... won't be in it! Now, listen, Abe... Come on, Lyman, get out of here. Pipe down, Wilson, or I'll knock you loose. <laughs> Can you imagine that? That and disrupting the whole broadcast. Wish my pal Fred Allen was here. He'd show you something. Who? Jack Dempsey. (laughs) Now, look here, Abe. Suppose I give you my word that we'll talk this over in a day or two. Will that be all right? I don't know. I had my heart set on this job. I'm sorry. Well, all right, Abe. Run along. I'll be seeing you. And don't forget, I'll be seeing you, too. (laughs) Well, fellas, that's... Some commotion, wasn't it? Hmm? I'm sorry it happened, Jack, but it was your own fault. You shouldn't have written him that letter. Oh, I only did it to encourage him. Besides, how did I know his uncle could read? Oh, don't worry about him, Jack. No, wait till he hit me. I can take care of myself, believe me. Hmm. Haven't been taking that cod liver oil all summer for nothing. <laughs> how about our play, Buck? No, Andy, there's no use trying to go on with this program. 
Come on, fellas. Lyman might be waiting outside, so I'll take you all home. Okay, okay Jack. Jack. Come on. Play, Phil. Surround me, boys. I want to be in the middle where I can think. <laughs> Uh, we will you again next Sunday night, weather and Lyman permitting. I sure get into things, don't I, folks? Say, Mary, I see where your picture this way, please, is opening at the Paramount Theater this week. Yes, it is, Jack. Yeah, I must go and see it opening night. See, everybody will be there. Phil and Kenny and Don and Abe. Abe, Lincoln or Lyman? Lyman. Oh, I'll go some other time. Good night, folks. <laughs> The Jell-O program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for the second broadcast of the new series, we bring you by popular demand and public acclaim our latest discovery, Jack What's His Name. Thank you. Hello again. This is Jack. What's his name talking? It was just been introduced by Don Who's This. And Don, that was an awful introduction. You're nothing but an old whatchamacallit. Well, Jack, I put you at ease. You know, I thought you were pretty nervous last Sunday night on our first broadcast. Well, Don, why not? I mean, after all, I'm the mother of the program. And you know what we have to go through. <laughs> But I must admit that I was never so frightened in my life. You think I had never faced a microphone? Yes, I noticed it, Jack, and I sympathized with you. Oh, I was a wreck. I shook so much that after the program, I found dandruff in my socks. <laughs> yes, and I noticed your hands were shaking, too. What has that done? I said your hands were shaking. Well, they were glad to see each other. <laughs> But I want to tell you something, Don, and this may sound silly. I was very happy to find out that I could be that nervous. You were? Why? Because it definitely proves my artistry. <laughs> you know, Don, there's an old saying that unless you're nervous, you're not a true artiste. Well, uh, <laughs> I agree with you. You know, there's something to that. Now, you take our greatest performers, any one of them. Well, I remember one time at the Metropolitan Opera when Lily Pons walked out on the stage absolutely trembling with fright. Really? Yes, sir. And when she picked up her violin and started to play, well, I never... Jack, Jack, what's the matter with it? Lily Pons is a singer. She doesn't play the violin. She doesn't? No. Well, that shows you how nervous she was. <laughs> but, but we're all like that. Now, we're all like that. Now, you take our own business, for instance, radio. Don, uh, come here a minute, will you? Did you ever, uh, did you ever watch Eddie Cantor broadcast? Yes, I have, Jack, and he's very funny. I didn't ask you that. <laughs> but is he jittery? Did you ever notice his eyes when he works? I'll say. It seems like they're going to pop right out of his head. Well, they would if he didn't use glue for an eye wash. <laughs> I can mention any number of cases. Now, you take Fred Astaire. I'll take Ginger. Quiet. No, really, you've seen Fred Astaire in pictures, haven't you, Doc? Yes, I have, and his dancing is marvelous. Dancing? Why, that's nothing but a nervous twit. <laughs> <laughs> but as I told you, Don, in show business, we're all like that. Well, I was once on a vaudeville bill with a contortionist who used to bite his toenails. Oh, was he nervous. <laughs> but you know, Don, I felt awfully sorry for Mary last Sunday. She was scared stiff. You said it. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Mary. You know, I was telling Don how excited I was last Sunday. Did you notice it, Mary? Why, Jack, you looked as cool as a cucumber. I did. And just as green. <laughs> well, it's no surprise to me. Gee, you were so upset you were even smoking a cigar. Well, what's unusual about that? You've seen me smoke a cigar before, haven't you? Yes, but not sideways. Oh, <laughs> Well, I suppose you were perfectly calm and at ease. I never saw anyone like you. I know it, Jack. Gee, I was so worried and fidgety that I don't even remember kissing Kenny. You don't? Well, how do you know you kissed Kenny? I've been acting like a dope all week. Well, <laughs> I can understand that. But, Mary, I was wondering about the show. Did you hear any reports on our last week's program? Oh, everybody's talking about it. Oh, yeah. And I brought a swell write-up from the Hollywood Reporter. Oh, yeah? What does it say? Don't grab it. I'll read it. I'm not grabbing. Go ahead. Uh, it says, uh, The Jello Show returned to the air Sunday night, October 3rd. Mm -hmm. Mary Livingston was her usual charming self. Oh. And the high spot of the evening was her poem about Paris. Mm -hmm. The program itself was spotty and jerky and dull at times. Oh. But Mary Livingston was her usual charming self. <laughs> What, again? Doesn't it say anything about me? Oh, sure, right here. 
Jack Benny got his laugh by making faces back at the audience. <laughs> did not make faces. There was a fly on my nose. Why don't you brush him off? Say, every listener counts. <laughs> Is there any more to the write-up, Mary? Uh, the program was very entertaining. Well. And although it was a cloudy evening with a slight northeast wind, Mary Livingston was her usual, usual charming, charming I know that. See, even the weather doesn't stop you. It's an awful write-up anyway. You'd think he'd make allowance for my nervousness on the first program. Oh, it wasn't just the program, Jack. You were upset because Abe Lyman came into the studio and threatened you. Why, because he tried to scare me into hiring his band? <laughs> that didn't affect me. The guy's nothing but a big bluff. Well, then why did you stay in the house all week? Because I was sick, that's why. <laughs> I even had a doctor, didn't I, Mary? Uh-huh. Oh, is that so? What was wrong with Jack? The doctor said he had a streak of jaundice down his back. <laughs> He did not He did not He said I had a breakdown from strain and worry I didn't leave the house until Friday Well, uh, you didn't run into Lyman, did you? No, and I wouldn't have cared if I did Then why did you wear those great big false whiskers? Because I had a cold on my chest and shut up (laughs) Why? What is this, a third degree? Hey, Jack, what's all the excitement? Nothing, Phil, but no one seems to believe me around here, that's all Gee, it's only natural to be tense on my first show. You were nervous, too, weren't you, Phil? What for? I'm no ham. <laughs> well, I'm not either, Phil, but, gee, I like to do a good job. Don't you want your music good? Don't you want your boys to play well? I wouldn't know it if they did. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's interesting. The sponsors will be glad to hear that. I bet they're not even listening. Fine talk, I must say. When I think of all the orchestra leaders that will be willing to take your job for almost nothing. What do you think I'm doing? (laughs) Well, of all, baby, of all the ungrateful things. Let me tell you something, Phil. You talked yourself right out of something. You were in line for a raise. That line hasn't moved in three years. (laughs) Oh, is that so? That's what you think. You got a raise, didn't you, Mary? I'll say. You see? But I was working in Macy's at the time. (laughs) And as for that, you won't get it. Say, Phil, even though you're not interested, I wonder if I can prevail upon you to lead the orchestra through our next musical selection. Okay. Wake up, man! Play, Phil. Now I'll sleep. was Am I in Love for Mr. Dodd Takes the Air, played by Phil Harris and his Sandman Ensemble. (laughs) Say, Phil, in spite of your attitude, your music does sound much better with those added musicians. Yes, I think so. Of course, I don't care much for that one new man you've got there. He keeps, you know, the fellow who keeps thumbing his nose at me all the time. Where? Right over there. That's the harmonica player. Oh! Oh, I I see. I didn't get that. Oh, yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Where's the harmonica? You can't afford one. Well, I wish you'd hire musicians instead of critics. <laughs> Believe me. Say, Jack. Yeah? Uh, those three violinists that Phil added certainly improved a lot. They have? Yeah, this week they're using both hands. Oh, <laughs> Well, anyway, a larger orchestra does help our show. Say, Phil, I forgot to ask you, did you hear any reports on last Sunday's broadcast? Nothing that wouldn't upset you. <laughs> well, it won't upset me. I want to know the truth. All right. For one thing, I read in the variety... I that read you... that, so don't get smart. <laughs> Wise guy. Yeah. Oh, here's something nice about you, Jack. Oh, yeah? Uh, Jack Benny, the star of the program, gave an exceedingly fine performance, as only he can admit. <laughs> Well, that's more like it there. Anything else? Uh, The studio was jammed, the reception was good, and Mary Livingston was her usual charming self. It's a fine writer. I bet you know every newspaper man in town. Well, it's a small town. Yeah, usual charming self. Now, listen, Jack, did I write those reviews? It wasn't your Aunt Minnie. (laughs) If I'm not too subtle. (laughs) Say, Jack, are you really heard about those write-ups? No, I'm not. You ought to see what the Waukegan Sun Gazette said about me. <laughs> Maybe it was a rave. Naturally, it was your hometown. Well, that's just a coincidence. They're very fair in Waukegan. Oh, go on. They're prejudiced because you're a local boy. They're not prejudiced. In fact, I had an uncle that was hung there. <laughs> 
So there. Stop showing off. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you read us the write-up, Jack? No, Don, it'll sound conceited. You can take my word for it that it's very good. Oh, I'll bet. Who wrote it? Jack's uncle, and it served him right. <laughs> well, let's drop it. You guys think hey, that... Hey, Jack, I... Jack. What? Get a load of Kenny. Yeah, look at him with a big cigar in his mouth. Cigar? Well, I'll be doggone. Hello, Kenny. Hiya, men. How's things and stuff? <laughs> well, I'll be... What do you hear from the mob? <laughs> Now, look, Kenny, just because we told you you're growing up, you don't have to rush things. Well, I'm in a hurry. Yeah? And another thing, throw away that cigar. It'll make you sick. It will not. It's chocolate. <laughs> oh, chocolate. Who's got a match? Kenny, you had me scared there for a minute. You know, your mother told me to keep an eye on you, so don't go acting up. You're getting a little too wild for a kid your age. I've got to have my fling, don't I? Fling? Well, you don't even know what a fling is. Well, when I find out, wow! <laughs> Get that guy. It's all your fault, Mary. You shouldn't have kissed Kenny last week. Well, you told me to. That's right, I did. Uh... Gee, he's got to grow up sometime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And furthermore, Kenny, it wouldn't hurt you to get here on time. Where were you? I stopped off for a slug of root beer. <laughs> oh, a slug of root beer, huh? huh? Boy, well. have I got a hangover. <laughs> Pardon me, Kenny, I didn't give you the yeah, lead I there. I'm sure. sorry. <laughs> well, pull yourself together, Kenny. It's time for your song. All right. Wait a minute. We'll answer the phone, man. Uh, Hello? Hello? Yes, Andy. Oh, hello, Mary. I want to speak to Buck. Okay. Say, Buck, I called up to tell you that I can't come down to the program today. I got a cold. A cold? Yeah, can't you notice it? <laughs> Not without television, Andy. It's too bad. How did you get it? Well, yesterday morning, I started to put on my underwear, and I didn't know which foot to put in first. Yeah. And while I was making up my mind, a draft snuck up on me. Well, that's a shame. You ought to take care of it. What you need is a good hot toddy. A hot toddy? Yeah. Well, what do you do? Drink it or go out with it? <laughs> you drink it. Well, Andy, as long as you got a cold... As long as you got a cold, you better go right to bed and get some sleep. I can't, Buck. Every time I snooze, I sneeze. All right, just stay in the house then. Take care of yourself. So long, Andy. So long, Buck. It's you. Gesundheit. Well, goodbye. Oh, Andy, how did our first program go over at your house? Oh, great, Buck. <laughs> the chickens are still cackling. <laughs> well, that's fine. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> you know, the cows like it, too. I know, Andy. I got a bottle of milk in my fan mail. <laughs> well, Goodbye. Say, Buck, when's Kenny going to sing? Right now, Andy. Wait a minute. Don't hang up. Go ahead. Sing, Kenny. Now, don't go away, Andy. Kenny's going to do his song right away. That was Kenny Baker singing Whispers in the Dark from Oddest Models, a great tune from a great picture. <laughs> and I've got a picked-up option to prove it. Gosh, did you sing that number in the picture, Jack? No, Kenny. I was too busy acting and making love. Wasn't I, Mary? Yes, sirree. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you ask me something. <laughs> anyway, Kenny, I heard some uh, nice comments on your song last week. Did you hear any reports on our program? Oh, swell, Jack. And I saw a great write-up for us in the Radio Daily. Well, we haven't got time for that. Oh, now. I got it right here. Oh, that, what does it say? It says, uh, the Jell-O program last Sunday was dynamite, but it failed to go off. <laughs> Is that so? However, the program was fairly good. Well. And Kenny Baker was Mary Livingston's usual charming self. <laughs> Now, that's what I call a real tribute. And now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, going from the write-ups to the sublime, we will present the first in a series of highly dramatic offerings entitled High, Wide, Tall, Dark, and Handsome. I will play the part of High. Wilson will be wide. And now, who else? Boy, if we only had a handsome. Quiet. Now, in this play... Oh, pardon me, folks. Come in. Here I come. I like to hear the birdies and the pigeons. Huh? Well, well. Hello, Welcome. Well, 
Oh, Jackie Boy and Wilson and Kennel and Mary. Oh, my, oh, my, 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 my. Yep, we're all here, Slap. We're all oh, here. Oh, my, am I happy to see you. Why, you could knock me down with that cheesecake. <laughs> Hey, Phil, Phil, I want you to meet an old friend of mine. Slap, this is Phil Harris. Glad to know you, Slap. The feeling is beneficial. <laughs> well, no kidding, Slap. It's sure nice to see you again. All the way from New York. How'd you come out? In my trailer. Oh. It only took me eight months. Eight months from New York in a trailer? Why, did you have trouble with your car? What car? I only had a trailer. <laughs> Oh, well, in that case, it's remarkable. Only eight months. Eh? Hey, Jack, with a little luck, I could have made it in seven. Why? What, what happened? My wife had a puncture. <laughs> so your wife made a trip with you. Imagine yeah. making a cross-country trip like that. Eight months. So what do you call your trailer? Schlepperman's Magic Carpet. <laughs> oh, it's a gin dandy. I can imagine a trailer. So how big is it? Three rooms and a swimming pool. <laughs> A swimming pool? How could you get a swimming pool in a trailer? I took out my tennis court. <laughs> well, you got here anyway. Say, Slap, did you hear our program last Sunday? Ah, oh, Jackie boy, it was marvelous. It was simply fascinating. There was only one thing missing. There was? And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you liked it. What do you think of our new addition, Andy Devine? Oh, he's tantalizing. Well, Slap, you must be tired. Sit down and relax, and we'll get together later. All right, honey child. I'd like to be in the chair. <laughs> Hey, Mary, isn't it good to see Schlepperville again? Huh? Yeah, but I wish he'd take that herring out of his hand while he's broadcasting. Well, his part is typed on it. And now, uh... <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll hello. continue with our program and offer a new series of, uh... Hello, Jack. Hello. Oh, hello, Lyman. I didn't hear you come in. Uh, watch out, Jack. Here comes Mickey Rath. Just be quiet, Mary. I'll handle this. There's going to be any trouble around here tonight. All right, Abe, what's bothering you now? You promised to talk things over with me during the week, and you never showed up. Now, listen, Abe. I told you last week that Phil Harris and his band were signed up for the season, and that settles it. What about that letter you sent me? That has nothing to do with it. A letter isn't a contract. It is, too. Stay out of this, Kenny. <laughs> you I can lick. <laughs> Now, Abe, I've had enough of this, so get out of here and leave us alone. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm not afraid of you. For two cents, I throw you out in your ear. Why don't you try it? Because money isn't everything. <laughs> That'll hold you. Now, look here, Lyman. You heard Jack say that I was signed up for the season, so why don't you scram? One more crack out of you, Phil, and I'll uncurl your hair. <laughs> And curls Phil's hair. I don't think you can do it. Well, I do. Good night, folks. <laughs> well, of all the yellow spineless... Gentlemen, gentlemen, what seems to be the confusion piece here? Oh, this guy is trying to bulldoze me. Is that so? He's feeling chippy, eh? Well, leave him to me. I'll put him in the place. Slap. Don't hold me. Oh. <laughs> Now, uh, look here, Limey boy. You're talking topsy-turvy. In this argument, you're all wrong. Now, listen here, you little punk. I'll punch you right in the nose. All of a sudden, I'm on your side. <laughs> Why are all my friends little guys? <laughs> now, look here, Abe. I don't want to have to appeal to your sympathy. But I've been pretty sick all week, and... And I've been in bed with a cold. <laughs> the doctor told me that any little excitement or worry is liable to prove fatal. Gee, Jack, I didn't know that. So put yourself in my position and try to understand. We'll talk this over when I feel better. Well, Jack, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were ill. Oh, I am. <laughs> See? Well, all right, I'll run along and we'll talk it over later. Okay, I'll straighten it out with you. You better or don't bother getting well. <laughs> oh, it's no bother. Well, thanks a lot. Goodbye, Abe. So long, Chiseler. Hmm. Can you imagine that? I hope he falls down the stairs. And now, folks, we... Well, I must be psychic. Later. And we'll be 
with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Oh, Mary. Yes, Jack. I went to the Paramount last night, saw your picture. This way, please. You did? How'd you like it? Oh, swell, Mary. You're awfully cute in it. I thought you were your usual charming self. Isn't that a coincidence? That's just what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Buck, can I hang up now? Oh, I forgot about Andy. Good night, folks. <laughs> The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. <laughs> that was Something to Sing About, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that favorite of men, women, and children, especially men and children, Jack Benny. <laughs> Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, that was an awfully nice introduction, up to the word especially. <laughs> you know, I don't do so bad with the ladies either. Oh, I didn't mean that, Jack. I just feel that you're not as romantic as some of the other male stars in Hollywood, and I thought I'd point it out. Well, it's not nice to point. <laughs> but let's forget that, Don. I've got something to tell you that's much more important, a real surprise. Oh, yes? What is it? Well, for a long time, I've been intending to make a certain move been a, on my mind for weeks, and yesterday I did it. I'm like a kid with a new toy. Why? What did you do? Well, I finally traded in my car. <laughs> you know, my car. You know, the one I've been driving around all the time. The Stanley Steamer? <laughs> yep, yep, the old Stanley. <laughs> well, it's about time you got rid of it. Now, wait a minute, Don. I know I've had it for a long while, but that car was in very good condition. And I've never had one bit of trouble with it. Then why did you trade it in? Well, I'll tell you, Don. I thought it was a little bit too old-fashioned for a young fella like me. <laughs> you know how it is, why the girls won't even look at you nowadays unless you put on a flash. So I traded it in. Well, that's fine, Jack. What did you get? A Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a honey. <laughs> a Maxwell? <laughs> Why, they haven't made those in ten years. Oh, it isn't new, Don. It's been used, but it's in... Really, it's, it's in swell shape. Wait till you see it. Oh, I'd like to. What color is it? Well, it's a sort of a plaid. It's, uh... It's been painted several times, you know. It's a coupe, you know. Oh, a coupe. Is it convertible? What's that, Don? Is it convertible? Oh, sure. I can get my money back on it any <laughs> Oh, yes. Uh, no, no, Jack. Is it convertible? Does the top go up and down? Oh, all the time, Don. All the time. <laughs> but it's got a lot of pep, believe me. Hey, Jack, what's this I hear about your new car? Oh, yes, Phil. I got it right downstairs. You ought to see it. Huh? So you finally got rid of that old tub, huh? Yeah. What did you get? A Maxwell. A Maxwell? What is it, a foreign car? No, Phil, it's a Maxwell. It was made right here in this country. Well, gee, they ought to advertise. <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, Phil, they haven't made them for quite a while, but the one I've got is pretty modern. It's right up there with the best of them, you know. Have you got a radio in it? No, but there's a Victrola on the steering wheel. <laughs> of course, it only plays when I'm turning corners. Oh. <laughs> Jack, I can't understand a guy like you buying a second-hand car. Why didn't you get one of the new ones, a 1938 model? Oh, before you get delivery on them, you get tired waiting, you know. But with a second-hand car, it's different. There's no delay. You walk on the lot, pick the one you want, they tow it out, and there you are. <laughs> well, all I can say is a car as old as that can't be very easy riding. Oh, no? Well, ask Mary. She was out in it. Hey, Mary. Yeah? Come here a minute. You were out in my car, weren't you? Uh-huh. Oh, you ought to see it, fellas. Jack and I drove all the way to Santa Barbara and back. Yes, sir. Boy, am I stiff. <laughs> yeah, stiff. That car runs plenty smooth, and you know it. Then why did you strap me in the seat? <laughs> because I never knew what minute we were going to take off. <laughs> Anyway, when a fella asks you for a ride, you don't have to be so critical. I'm not critical, but gee, after a ride like that. Yeah. Were you badly shaken up, Mary? I'll say. Now I know what a malted milk goes through. <laughs> oh, it wasn't as bad as that, Mary. You know, we went clear to Santa Barbara and back without a bit of trouble. Oh, yeah? What about that door that fell off? <laughs> well, that was your fault. You leaned on it. <laughs> 
And anyway, any car that can make a 90-mile trip without stopping for gas or oil must be okay. How long did it take you, Jack? Well... We uh... started Tuesday. Quiet. <laughs> Took us about five hours down, but we were bucking the wind. <laughs> anyway, it was a very pleasant drive, whether Mary liked it or not. I did like it, oh. and I've got black and blue marks to prove it. <laughs> well, you guys can laugh, but I'm satisfied with my little Maxie. <laughs> Hiya, fellows. Hello. Hello, Hello, Hello Kelly. Hello. <laughs> oh, boy. You want to see what I saw downstairs? <laughs> What? Huh? A car. Gee, you ought to see the crowd standing around it. <laughs> the crowd? Are they admiring the car, Kenny? No, they're waiting to see the guy that would ride in it. Oh, <laughs> well, they are. Well, Kenny, for your information, that car belongs to me. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, it does. If you don't happen to like it, you don't have to make any smart crap. Oh, excuse me, Jack. I, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I think your car is swell. Well. <laughs> <laughs> now, look here, Kenny. Control yourself. <laughs> You're here to sing and nothing else, so go ahead and do it. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. See who that is, Mary. Telegram for Jack Benny. Take it, Mary. Uh, what are you going to sing tonight, Kenny? I'm going to sing that old feeling. Oh, look, Jack. This wire's from a vaudeville agent in New York. Well, what does it say? Uh, Jack Benny Hollywood. Can offer your car three weeks at Paramount Theater. <laughs> Ah, you see, I knew that was a good investment. I know what I'm doing. Sing, Kenny, Mary, wire him that I go with the car, will you? <laughs> that was that old feeling from Vogue's of 1938, sung by Kenny Baker in his usual fine style. Kenny, your stock just went up three points. Thanks, Jack. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we are going to present something of a more legitimate nature. <laughs> something... <laughs> Kenny, I warned you. <laughs> oh, boy, what a car. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Kenny. I've stood for just about enough. And that goes for everybody in this company. I don't want to hear another word about my car, and that's final. Now, let's change the subject. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as I said before, tonight, we are going to present something of a more legitimate nature, something very unhokey. We are offering... <laughs> We are offering our version of 20th Century's Fox's recent film success, Wife, Doctor, and Nurse. Please, Mr. Zanuck. <laughs> now, as you may remember, this picture, this picture starred Loretta Young, Warner Baxter, and Virginia Bruce. I will play Warner Baxter's part, the doctor. And I'll be the nurse. That's right, Mary. And I invited Loretta Young to play the part of my wife. What did she say, Jack? Oh, who needs her? You know. <laughs> say. Oh, I don't know, Jack. You'd like to have Loretta Young play that part. Now, wait a minute, Phil. Don't be too sure. There are a lot of girls who are much more beautiful than Loretta Young. Aw, oh, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mean you. Well, name one. Go ahead. Name one. Well, the scene of our little play <laughs> is the office and clinic of Dr. Benny, the famous physician and surgeon. You know, folks, I can hardly wait till I play this part. It's right up my alley. Oh, Kenny. Yes, Jack? Uh, run out and get me a mustache. I want to look like Warner Baxter. Okay. Get him a face, too. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll look all right. Hurry with that mustache, Kenny. I can't do a thing without it. Huh? Well, Jack, if the part in our play tonight is so important, why didn't you grow a real one? I did, Don. I did grow a mustache, but... It looked like an eyebrow, and I kept winking my mouth. <laughs> oh, it was awful, huh? Well, that must have been annoying. Well, I didn't mind that, but when the doctor told me my teeth needed glasses, I thought that was too much. <laughs> anyway, this play will go on immediately after the next number. Oh, Phil, uh, uh, play something apropos, will you? You know, something that will put us in a medical mood. Oh, we'll jangle your nerves, all right. Well, you probably will, yeah. <laughs> Gee, Phil, the way you run down your orchestra, goodness, isn't there... Is there one good man in your band? Yes, the guitar player is swell. <laughs> the guitar player? Well, gee, he isn't so important. He is, too. He marshals my hair. <laughs> <laughs> you do? <laughs> well, I must make an appointment with him. My hair needs a wave, doesn't it, Mary? Yeah, but you better do it quick. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I got all the hair I need. You have? Then what's that shiny spot in the back? That's where he parks his car. Oh. <laughs> it 
it is not. That's where I used to worry. And Mary, I told you to lay off my car. It's my property. I bought it. And I'm the one that has to make the payments. Payments? I thought it came in a box of Cracker Jack. Well, I suppose that doesn't cost money. <laughs> anyway, we're wasting a lot of time. Let's get in the mood for our sketch. Play something, Phil, while I get into my stethoscope. Mary, have you seen my white jacket any place? from Dreaming, played by Phil Harris and his M.D.'s, Musical Demons. And now for our play, Wife, Doctor, and Nurse. The opening scene... Hey, it's... Jack. Yes, Kenny. Here's the mustache you sent me for. Isn't it nice? Let's see it. Oh, a pretty green one. <laughs> Kenny, you're the only person in the world that would ever think of buying a green mustache. Ain't it the truth? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly is. Imagine putting a green mustache under my nose. If I was your upper lip, I'd walk out. Well, it'll have to do. And now for our play, folks. Wife, doctor, and nurse. The opening scene is the office of Dr. Benny, where we find his staff, his nurse, and some assorted patients. Curtain. Music. Hello, Dr. Benny's office. Sorry, the doctor's out doing research work. He's down at Minsky's studying anatomy. Goodbye. Minsky's. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Benny's office. What's that? Your husband swallowed a collar button? Well, that's not so serious. Oh, it was in a shirt. Well, I'll tell the doctor. Goodbye. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, Miss Livingston. Is the patient on 503 showing any improvement? Oh, he's much better. This morning he chased me all around the room. Well, he always does that, doesn't he? Yeah, but today he caught me. <laughs> well, we'll have to discharge him. Say, doctor, are we operating on Mr. Wilson today? Yes, doctor, yes. But first we must take another X-ray. Uh, what does this chart read, Miss Livingston? Uh, here it is. He has a marked febrile reaction and a high leukotosis. Mm -hmm. But the polynuclear cells and the lymphocytes show no toxic changes. Oh, that's terrible. Terrible. No, doctor, that's good. Oh, is it? <laughs> well, that's fine. Hmm, only two guesses, and I got the wrong one. <laughs> uh, what about Mrs. Smith in 218? Well, Doctor, her scoliosis is impaired, but her absonic index is below par. Hmm. What do you think of that? Nothing. You're not going to catch me again. <laughs> I'll be in my office for the next hour. Call me when we're ready for uh, Mr. Wilson. I'll do that, Doctor. Oh, Dr. Benny. Yes, Dr. Baker. I wish you'd give me something. I got an awful stomachache. Well, you're a doctor. Why don't you treat yourself? Not me. I charge too much. <laughs> Well, dicker a little. You'll come down. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll be in my office, Miss Livingston. <laughs> Miss Livingston. Miss Livingston. What's the meaning of this? What? Who put pants on that skeleton? I did. Doesn't he look cute? Cute. Who ever heard of a skeleton with pants? I saw it in Esquire. <laughs> well, take them off. Yes, sir. Oh, Doctor, I forgot to tell you, your wife is in the reception room. My wife? Show her right in. I can't. That's the part Loretta Young was supposed to play. Well, get somebody else to play it. We've got to go on. Get anybody. Oh, all right. Hmm, it's a fine how do you do. Uh, this way, Mrs. Benny. Oh, hello, dear. Hello, darling. <laughs> it's a fine substitute. I'm so glad you dropped in, dear. Have you been shopping? Yes, I bought the cutest pink rompers for Junior with little blue pockets. <laughs> oh, for Junior. I can hardly wait till he puts them on. If I'm Junior, I'll scream. Get out of here. Well, darling, run along. I'm very busy. I'll be home early. Oh, you say that every night, and I keep waiting and waiting. <laughs> but this time, I mean it. What are we having for dinner, honey? Oh, chicken pot pie, and I made it with my own little hand. Oh, goody, I'll bet it's lousy. <laughs> now, run along, dear, I'm very busy. But first, I gotta have some money. I wanna buy some lingerie. Lingerie? Well, all right, underwear. <laughs> all right, here's $25. Now, go. Oh, wait a minute. Why don't you introduce me to your friend? What friend? That's a skeleton. Skeleton? Yeah. Well, it was his own fault for coming to you. Now, 
scram, dear. Get out of here. I got lots of work to do. <laughs> All righty. Goodbye. <laughs> a fine mix-up. I'm so mad I could operate on somebody. <laughs> yes? Oh, doctor, we're all ready for Mr. Wilson. Fine. Get Dr. Baker and Dr. Harris immediately. First, we must have another x-ray to confirm the diagnosis. Prepare everything. Yes, doctor. Well, here we are. Everything set? Yes, doctor. We're all ready, doctor. Well, Mr. Wilson, are you nervous? Uh, no, no, doctor, not a bit. Well, I am. It's more serious than I thought. Well, we'll have to take another X-ray. Stand over there a little so you're in focus. Is this all right? Fine. Now, ready for the picture? Turn on the machine. Quiet, everybody. Quiet. Quiet. Quiet on the set. Camera. We're turning. Action. <laughs> Dr. Baker, notice how high the right diagram, uh, diaphragm is, and the epiglottis. <laughs> 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 All right, so I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Dr. Baker, you notice how high the right diaphragm is, and the epiglottis seems to be a little swollen. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Look, Doc, he seems to have hepatic hypertrophy. What's that? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, Doc, look, he's got coins in his pocket. Don't grab, I saw him first. <laughs> Wait, look at that abnormal shadow on the left side. We must remove it at once. That's his heart. Oh, then that wouldn't be cricket. <laughs> ah, but you notice he has that same epi... That same epi... That same condition. Right. Rush him to the surgery. What's the matter with me, doctor? Absolutely. We must operate at once. Oh, doctor, doctor, we're all out of ether. Out of ether? What do we do? Squeeze Kenny. That's it. Let's hurry. Last one in the operating room is a rot. Nay! <laughs> How's Mr. Wilson getting along? Fine, fine. Uh, was the operation a success? It certainly was. Liberty Magazine gave it four stars. <laughs> Darn it. What are you mad about? That's two more than they gave my picture. <laughs> well, I must dash home now. See you in the morning, Miss Livingston. Good night. Oh, wait a minute, Doctor. Before you go, there's a patient been waiting all day to see you. Very well. Send him in. Uh, step right in the office, sir. Thank you, my little light pigeon. <laughs> Hello, Schleppo. My, 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 you got a fancy office with snappy furniture. <laughs> ah, I'll bet you're charging 20. No, 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 my fees are reasonable. $5 for an office visit and $15 if I come to your house. If you catch me home, I deserve it. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Schlepp, uh, what seems to be the trouble with you? I don't know, Ducky. One minute I'm hot, the next minute I'm cold. And then I'm ringing wet. Well, those are alarming symptoms. When did you first notice them? This morning, when I took a shower. <laughs> well, that's simple. Just give up bathing. You're perfectly all right. No, no, Doc. I don't feel so good. I think you should give me some medicine. But you don't need medicine. You're perfectly normal. But I feel sick in the vita break. <laughs> but you're not sick, Slap. You're the picture of health. I'm dying, and he's talking pictures. <laughs> Now, Schlepp, believe me, there's nothing wrong with you. Well, uh, why don't you be more of a salesman? But look, Schlepp, I can't do it. I got prestige. I've got ethics. Who cares what you got? I'm the patient. <laughs> but I don't want to take your money if there's nothing the matter with you. Nothing the matter with me, Miss Hawkins. I got headaches. I got chills. I got pains in my back. I got rheumatism on my arms. And not only that, my feet hurt. Oh, come, come, Schlepp. Why, that's impossible. Impossible? Why? Because... You can't have everything Be satisfied with the little you have I must have everything The way I suffer and the trouble that I have Live, let your cares will be forgotten But I feel rotten Just bring me down to Dixie, say hello to Trixie Poor and bigger on me You can't have and thus, ladies and gentlemen, ends another one of our highly dramatic offers. Wife, doctor, and nurse. Did you like it? Mm -hmm. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. I hope you all liked our little play, and that you will all... Answer the phone, Mary. Hello? 
Yes. Oh, Jack, it's Loretta Young. Well, tell her it's too late. Not for what she has to say. Good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that prominent comedian, musician, and after-dinner speaker, Jack Benny. Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and thanks, Don, for finally giving me a legitimate introduction. (laughs) But no kidding, how did you happen to mention that I was an after-dinner speaker? Well, Jack, you know, I heard your speech at the Eddie Cantor anniversary uh, last Thursday night, and I thought you did a swell job. Well, thanks, thanks, thanks. Of course, I did think your voice sounded a little strained and unnatural. Well, I'll tell you, Don, they called on me right in the middle of the dinner, and I had a talk through a Brussels sprout. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but that, uh, that was quite an affair, wasn't it? Oh, yes, Jack, and a great gesture to a great comedian. Yeah. And I think Eddie Cantor deserves that tribute. Oh, so do I, Don. But, of course, uh... oh, well, let it go. <laughs> <laughs> of course what? Come here a minute, Don. You know what burns me up? I know I haven't been in show business as long as Cantor. I know that. But this is my fourth year with Jell-O, isn't it? Yes, it is, Jack. And you'd think that someone would give me a dinner. Well, uh, 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 who, for instance? My sponsor, General Foods. Gee, if a food program doesn't think of a dinner, who will? Now, wait a minute, Jack. You have no complaint to make at all. Jell-O and General Foods have been mighty sweet to you, and furthermore, you've been very well paid. Look, Don, it isn't the money. There's something beyond dollars and cents. All I want is a little tribute from coast to coast. <laughs> That's all, a little gratitude. Hello, Jack. What are you squawking about tonight? Oh, nothing, Mary. Don and I were just talking about the Eddie Cantor dinner. Were you there, Mary? Oh, sure. I was there right from the start. You were? Uh, how'd you like my speech? Well, the service was slow, too. <laughs> no, I don't know. I thought my speech was funny enough. You got more laughs when you were eating. <laughs> That's so. Well, I was nervous. And who wouldn't be? I was sitting right next to the governor of California, Governor Merriam. Well, you didn't have to throw your chicken bones on his plate. (laughs) I did? Oh, is that why he was glaring at me? Gee, Mary, do you think the governor is sore at me for that? No, but don't ever kill anybody in this state. (laughs) I won't, believe me. You know, Barry Jack seems to think that Jell-O ought to give him a dinner. A dinner? Yes. You mean instead of his salary? No. (laughs) Don't put any ideas into people's heads. I think you ought to give our sponsors a dinner for being so nice to you all these years. Oh, so you're sticking up for them, huh? I'll say. I know which side my bread is jelloed on. <laughs> hey, that's very clever. Did Kenny help you think of that? Gosh, no. I never think of anything. Oh, hello, Kenny. Hello, did you just get here? Yeah. I'm sorry I'm a little late, Jack, but I was over in the next studio talking to Charlie McCarthy. Oh, was uh, Edgar Bergen there, too? No, just Charlie and I. <laughs> And you were talking to Charlie McCarthy, eh? Yeah, gee, is he dumb. (laughs) Well, he's supposed to be. He's a dummy. Oh, say, Jack, if you think I'm bad, Edgar Bergen came over later and, oh, boy, is he all mixed up. Why, what happened? He asked Charlie to sing and put me in a suitcase. (laughs) Oh, can you imagine that, Mary? Edgar Bergen thought Kenny was Charlie McCarthy. Gee, if he can't tell them apart, who can? Don't look at me. Me neither. (laughs) Don't worry, Kenny. We'll find somebody. By the way, Kenny, did you tune in on the Eddie Cantor dinner Thursday? Yes, and it was a swell program. Did you hear my speech? No, I don't think so. Well, didn't you hear Dr. Giannini and, or Governor Merriam? Yeah, which one were you? <laughs> which one was I? The one who's jealous. I'm not jealous. All I said was that Jell-O might have done the same for me. Oh, don't let it bother you, Jack. Sure, don't let it worry you. Say, who's worrying about it? Who cares? You do. I mean, besides me. (laughs) Answer the phone, Mary. Okay. Hello? Yes? Oh, hello, Mr. Campbell. It's for you, Jack Lawton Campbell of General Foods. Oh, the boss. Mm -hmm. Well. Uh, Hello, Mr. Campbell. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are things in New York? Well, (laughs) that's good. (laughs) What? Me? Oh, no, Mr. Campbell, I just... No, I just felt that Jell-O might give me a dinner. 
What? No, I'm not hungry, Mr. Campbell. I... <laughs> but I just thought that... I know, but I just thought... I know, but I just... But I... But I... That's telling him. Quiet. <laughs> now, look. Look, Mr. Campbell, I'm not tooting my horn. I'm a violin player. Is that so? <laughs> what? Oh, all right. He wants to talk to you, Mary. Hello, Mr. Campbell. Hello, Mr. Campbell. Uh, what? No, Jack feels all right. He's just a little nervous, I guess. After all, he's not a kid anymore. I'm not, Ian. I'm younger than he is. Uh, nothing, Mr. Campbell. Jack just said that he's younger than you are. You little traitor. Uh, what? <laughs> what did he say, Mary? He said... <laughs> well, what did he say? He said you'll age around auction time. <laughs> what I get for appreciating me. Yes, Mr. Campbell. All right, thank you. Goodbye. Gee, Mary, do you, do you think he's really mad at me? No, Jack. He knows you don't mean anything you say. That's right. Of course, it won't hurt me to look around for something. <laughs> well, anyway, I guess it'll blow over. Hey, Kenny. Yes, Jack? It's time for your song. How about it? I already sang it. You did? Where? In the suitcase. <laughs> Oh, how did it sound? Not so good. I had my feet in my mouth. <laughs> well, now that you're straightened out, sing it again, will Okay. You? Wait a minute, Kenny. Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Take it, Mary. Uh, what are you going to sing tonight, Kenny? I'm going to sing Rosita. Oh, that's a beautiful number. Uh, Jack, this wire's from the Western Costume Company. Western Costume Company? What does it say? It says, Mi Dear Mr. Benny, stop worrying about Tanner's dinner and return that full dress suit. <laughs> oh, that slipped my mind. <laughs> Think, Kenny, I must send that right over. <laughs> That was Rosita, sung by Kenny Baker. And, Kenny, I don't know how it sounded in that suitcase, but out here it was swell. Thanks. You know, there's one nice thing about you, Jack. You always compliment me after my song. Well, Kenny, I only do it because you deserve it. You're really a great delineator of songs. Yeah. <laughs> well, you are. Jack, what does delineator mean? Well, Mary, it means, uh... Well, delineator means, uh... It means, well... Yeah. Oh, I know what it is. I just can't find the word. Hey, Phil, what does delineator mean? Delineator? That's it. Well, it means, um... Delineator means, uh, uh well, uh... So Jack told me. Funny, I got it right on the tip of my tongue. Ask your boys, Phil. I'm not gonna wake them up just for one word. <laughs> no, I wouldn't bother, no. Say, Phil... I heard that you and the orchestra were working down in Phoenix, Arizona this past week. Some sort of a celebration there. Yes, Jack, they're having a big fiesta. Oh, a fiesta? That's a sort of a... Uh, oh, oh, what is it, Mary? I'm still working on delineator. <laughs> well, stay with us. Uh, fiesta is... Uh... Gee, we don't know anything, do we? <laughs> <laughs> Kenny. You know, Phil, I was going to drive down to Phoenix and see you. Gee, you? I wish you had. Say, Jack, yeah. have you still got that old Maxwell you bought last week? I didn't hear that. What is that, Phil? I said, have you still got that old Maxwell you bought last week? Oh, I sure have. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Kenny. That car is holding up great, so don't laugh. <laughs> Who's laughing? <laughs> well, I'm satisfied with it, and that's all that counts. Have you been driving it around much, Jack? Oh, sure. I made a lot of trips this week, Don. I opened her up, and she certainly can go, believe me. Jack, what? tell him what happened Wednesday morning when we were out driving. Oh, no, not with this gang around, no. Well, you, you tell us, Mary, what was it? Well... Now, Mary... Oh, what's the difference? Come on, Mary, tell us. Well, Jack and I were out driving Wednesday morning on Wilshire Boulevard, and there was a great big truck right in front of us. Mary. Anyway, we were riding along, and all of a sudden, the truck backfired. And what happened? Jack's motor dropped out. <laughs> Well, that could happen to anyone. Anyway, there's one thing about my car. It never backfired. It wouldn't dare to. <laughs> well, fellas, have your little fun. I'm a big enough guy to take it. Come in. Another telegram for Jack Benny. Right here, son, and thank you. Say, don't you ever give tips? 
Hmm. Tiff, with Christmas only two months off. <laughs> Who's Fred the wire Jeff. from, Jack? Here it is. Uh, Dear Buck. Oh, it's from Andy. Listen to this, fellas. It says, Dear Buck, wish you and the gang would come over to our place tonight and giving a Halloween party in our barn. Oh, oh that's boy, that's boy, Halloween. Oh, that's great. Was going to have it last night, but the cider wasn't hard enough. <laughs> Come over right away as we're going strong. Andy. Oh, boy, cider. Kenny, you can't have cider. You'll drink milk. All right, but I'll stagger just the same. <laughs> well, come on, fellas. Let's go right out. Right, right go over before the party's over. Huh? I'm ready. Me too. I was going to wear masquerade costumes. Say, that'd be fun. See, we could all go with something. Yeah, I wonder what I could be. Uh, why don't you part your hair and go to the Lincoln Highway? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's not bother. We haven't got time anyway. Come on, fellas. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got to lead the next number. All right, Bill. And as soon as you're through, meet us over there. Will you hurry up, fellas? Come on, let's go. All right, fellas. All right. See you later, Bill. How are we going to get there, Jack? How are we going to get there? In my car. It's right downstairs. Oh, oh no. no. Now, don't be silly. There's no danger. Come on. I wouldn't ride in that car if you put on back night. <laughs> right, there's nothing to worry about. Now, who's willing to take a chance? That's the spirit. <laughs> I'll get to there in no time. So long, Phil. So long. Bye, bye, bye. 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 <laughs> hey, gee, we ought to be there pretty soon. Oh, boy, what a car. I'll say, why don't you put it in second, Jack? Okay, hey, Don, help me shift this gear, will you? Righto, righto. <laughs> That's better. Say, Kenny, what's that you got under your arm? I don't know. That's a fender and put it back. <laughs> oh, Jack, look, there's the plate. Yeah, here we are, fellas. There's Andy standing out in front with a lantern. Right up this driveway, fellas! <laughs> okay, hold on tight, boys. We're going to stop. Come on, get out, everybody. <laughs> Hello, Andy. Hiya, back hell, gang. Oh, oh, hi, Andy. Hey, Jack. What? Jack, look, there's Phil. Hello, Jack. Why, Phil, how did you get here so fast? I walked. <laughs> Come here, Phil. Don't tell anybody about this, will you? Well, I won't if I don't have to ride home with you. It's a bargain. Say, Andy, is it all right if I leave my car out here? Drive it in the barn. I want my bull to see it. <laughs> Nothing doing. Hey, where's the party? Follow me. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Watch out for my chicken. <laughs> An orchestra and everything, huh? Gee, it sounds just like Phil's, only better. Yes, sir. Hiya, boys! Hello! Hello. <laughs> Gee, this is a swell party, isn't it? And then a swell party, Mary, right in the barn. Isn't this real atmosphere? You said it. Open the window. <laughs> Now, don't be funny. Hey, Buck, you remember Ma, don't you? Oh, sure. How are you, Mrs. Devine? Happy New Year! Yippee! <laughs> well, you're having a good time. Hey, Andy, isn't that your paw over there? No, that's the goat. Oh, I should have known better. Your paw hasn't got horns. He should have. He's a devil. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Pa. Hey, Pa, you say hello to Buck. How are you feeling, young fella? Just fine, Mr. Devine. How are you? Oh, pretty good for a man 83 years old. No kidding. Are you really 83? Yes, sir, but don't tell my wife. <laughs> Why not? She thinks I'm 81. <laughs> 83 and you look so healthy. So how do you account for it? Well, I led a good, clean life up to the age of 10. <laughs> That's remarkable, Mr. Devine. You deserve a pat on the back. Don't do it. I'll fall apart. <laughs> Hey, you wouldn't think so to look at you. What holds you together? I use adhesive tape for underwear. <laughs> adhesive tape? How do you get it off? That's been worrying me for years. <laughs> hey, Mr. Devine, you, re you remember Mary, don't you? Oh, you darn tootin'. Hello, Junior. <laughs> <laughs> How do you, Mary? Say, how'd you like to wiggle through a hot rumba? Hot rumba? Yeah, that's me, old sizzle hips. <laughs> Now, well, Andy, well. you behave yourself. Pipe down, Ma. You're repulsive. <laughs> oh, Jack, let's 
Let's join the gang. They're over there bobbing for apples. Say, that's a lot of fun, bobbing for apples. It sure is. Let's go, Mary. If you find one with teeth in it, it's mine. <laughs> Come on, Jack. Oh, hey, yeah. Buck, how about a little apple cider? Woo-hoo! Sure thing, Andy. Ride with you. Come on, everybody. Hey, 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 hey. Don, Don, aren't you having a little cider? Am I? Lead me to it. Now, how about you, Phil? I'm on my second jug now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jack, look at that little pig. Isn't he cute? Yeah. And a dog, too. Gee, look, and there's a couple of cows. Hey, Andy, how'd you happen to have all your animals at the party? Well, Pa got the invitations mixed up, and I can't insult them now. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. <laughs> if I have to dance with a bull, I'm going home. Well, wait till he asks you. Now, how about another drink, fellas? Oh, yeah. Hey, Jack, look what I found. Kenny, Kenny, get away from that horse. It'll bite you. Not this end. <laughs> well, it's dangerous. Say, Buck, let's have a little ent- entertainment. How about some excitement? Well, we're all here. Let's start something. Oh, yeah. Listen, I'll tell you what, fellas. Listen, I've got a good idea. Let's get Mary to sing a song. Oh, yeah. well, come on. Let me sing a song. Come on, Mary, huh? No, 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 but I will. I had a girl, I had a girl. What are you going to sing, Mary? Uh, do you know, boys know, have you got any castles, baby? Sure thing. Well, that's well, and we'll all join in on the second chorus. Huh? Hit it, boys. Oh, have you got any mountains that you want to have plum, baby? Plum? Have you got any ocean that you want to have swum, baby? Swum? Ah. I'll get out of my bonnet and shawl. Yeah. I'll get into my nothing at all. Sing it, Mary. I'll give out with a wide, small crawl. And over the waves we go splash, dunk. Have you got any cotton that you want me to fly, baby? Wow, wow. Oh, there just isn't anything that I wouldn't try for you. Try for you? After my adventures are through, yeah. and I hung up a record or two, you can tell all the papers that I did it because I Bill and Andy, you take it. Have ah. you got any castles that you want me to build, baby? Have you got any dreams that you want to have killed, baby? They get I'll get into my seven-league boots. I'll get into my bulletproof suits. I'll get out my revolver that shoots. Down they'll go. go. Have you got any mortgages you'd like to have paid, baby? Swing it, Andy. Have you got any villains that you want to have laid to rest? <laughs> After all my adventures are through, can't you bring home a dragon or two? You can tell all the papers that I did it because I love you. That was great. You're sure hot tonight, Andy. Thanks, Buck. Now, how about playing a violin solo? Oh, no, no, no. Anyway, Andy, I haven't got my fiddle. Hooray! Hey, I'll get you a fiddle from the orchestra. All right, if you insist. I want some cider. Quiet. Here's a violin, Buck. I don't know if it's in tune or not. Oh, I'll get along all right. I think I'll get along, too. Good night, folks. You stay right here. Now, I'll play another chorus of the same thing. Wait, I want to get tuned up first. <laughs> That's all right. Well, boys, one more course, the same thing, and swing it. Get away! I'll give a concert in a zoo. 
Even high fest would have had trouble here. Well, let's have a dance. Play, boys. Come on. Let's dance. Good night, folks. Good night. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now we bring you Jack Benny from Waukegan. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and I must ask you one thing, Don. How do you ever think of all those cute introductions about me? Well, I don't think of them, Jack. I just open my mouth, and there you are. Well, <laughs> anyway, I'm glad you were considerate today. I feel much too good to start an argument. I oh, really you do. don't say. Well, now, what's the cause of your sudden exuberance? Well, hmm? Well, <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Don. I, uh... <laughs> Just about forgot that. Uh, no, I, uh, I wasn't feeling so hot for a couple of weeks, so I drove down to Palm Springs for a rest. And I want to tell you that desert is marvelous for you. I never saw so much sand without spinach. Really? <laughs> oh, really? It's, oh. And the sun. You know, I was out in the sun from morning till night. Oh, you were? Well, you're not very tan. Well, believe me, Don, right up to the last day, I was as brown as a berry. And what happened? I got my hotel bill and turned white. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Mary. She drove down with me. I sure did. Yeah. Was the hotel really that expensive, Mary? Yes, but Jack got his money back in towels alone. <laughs> Oh, what's that? Everybody takes a towel or two. A towel or two? Yeah. The back of your car looked like a linen closet. <laughs> now, don't believe her, Don. Hey, Jack, don't tell me you drove down in that old Maxwell of yours. Yes, we did, Phil, and we had no trouble at all. How long did it take you? Oh, we made pretty good time. Believe me, we stepped right along. Mary, tell them how we whizzed by that big Rolls Royce. Uh, you mean the one that was out of gas? <laughs> <laughs> well, we would have passed it anyway. But to tell you the truth, fellas, the only real trouble we had was with hitchhikers. You know, bothering and thumbing at us all the time, you know. Well, that must have been annoying. Oh, it was. Tell them where they had their thumbs, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not important. Say, Jack, what? how far is Palm Springs from here? Oh, it's only a two-hour drive. Haven't you ever been there, Kenny? I started to go there once, but I got seasick. Seasick? Kenny, how can you get seasick on land? I wore a sailor suit. Oh. I knew that wouldn't get a big laugh. I knew it. I knew it. I just knew it. But, Kenny, Kenny, you ought to go to Palm Springs sometime. No, really, you ought to go there. It's the healthiest place you've ever seen. You'd love it. Ah, uh, California's good enough for me. <laughs> But, Kenny, Palm Springs is in California, and it always has been. Oh, uh, don't be so gullible. <laughs> gullible? You don't even know what gullible is. What's that got to do with it? Uh, you got me there. <laughs> what are you giggling at, Mary? I'm just reading a letter from my mother. She, she's a scream. Oh, are we going to have that again this year? <laughs> look, Jack, look how she starts this letter. How? An open letter to my daughter, Mary. Reading time, four minutes, ten seconds. <laughs> Say, that's all right. What's she got to say? Uh, she says, uh, my darling daughter, uh -huh. received your letter and sorry that I wasn't able to answer sooner. I have been very busy doing spring cleaning, which slipped my mind last May. Oh. oh. Anyway, I want to thank you very much for the check you enclosed, even though you forgot to sign it. Oh, Mary. However, your brother Hillard signed it for you, which got a big laugh at the bank and he is now in Leavenworth. <laughs> In Leavenworth? Uh, the judge wanted to send him to Atlanta, but he was there before and didn't like it. Oh, he'll enjoy Leavenworth much more. Uh, we had a lot of excitement on Halloween. Your father and I were out all night ringing doorbells and banging on windows. Well. It was some fun until a man came out and banged your father. <laughs> oh, what a shame. And that isn't all. That same night, your grandfather had another attack of jaundice. Jaundice? So he stuck a candle in his mouth and used him for a jack-o'-lantern. 
Well, that's novel. Uh, say, Mary, do you remember that big police dog the people next door owns? Well, the other day they let him out without his muzzle and your Uncle Willie bit him. <laughs> your Uncle Willie? Oh, isn't he the one that used to run the barber shop? Yeah, that's him. Oh, I thought so. Read on, Mary. Uh, tell Jack your Uncle Willie is not running the barber shop anymore. Oh. As he was caught combing a customer's hair and pockets. <laughs> That's a nice family you've got. Uh, tell Jack if he makes one more crack about us, I'll stop this letter. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Livingston. Yeah. Must close now as a man from the post office just came to get his pen back. <laughs> <laughs> so be a good girl and give my best to all your ever-loving mama. Well, that's some letter. Oh, there's more. P.S. Oh. Uh, please stop riding around in Jack's old Maxwell as they have threatened to take us out of the blue book. <laughs> Tell your mother to mind her own business. Go ahead and sing, Kenny, before there's another P.S. Go ahead. <laughs> Palm Springs in California. Oh, sing. Mary, when you answer that letter, be sure and enclose Kenny, will you? <laughs> that was, uh... That's, uh... <laughs> that's what I call real vocalizing. Yes, sir. That was Roses in December, sung by Kenny Baker in November. Well, gee, I'm sorry, Jack. Well, it's nothing to be sorry about, Kenny. You can sing a December song in November. That's right. I knew a fellow who sang June and January in August. You did? Who was it? Me. Ain't I the one? <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you certainly are. And now tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have a real surprise for you. Something old yet new. Something you will all enjoy. And I know... See who that is, Mary. Okay. So tonight, folks, we are going to present... Oh, uh, Jack. Yes? Uh, there are a couple of boys out here who want to see you. Oh, send him in. Why don't you ask him, Henry? No, you ask him yourself, loudmouth. All right, I'll handle this. Well, what is it, boys? What do you want to know? Mr. Benny, is that your automobile parked downstairs in front of the studio? Why, yes, it is. Does it run? Run? Of course it runs. My, my. <laughs> Well, what about it? Nothing. I just lost three dollars. Here you are, Henry. <laughs> yeah. That's a fine thing. I'm going to throw a blanket over that car and stop all this gambling. Go on. You ought to sell it to a junk man. You'll have to fix it up first. <laughs> Gee, all you guys get a big kick out of my car, don't you? Uh, yeah. Jack. What? Jack, tell him what happened on the way to Palm Springs. I won't. Don't you start anything like you did last week. Why? What happened, Mary? Well, oh. we started out about <laughs> 9 o'clock in the morning, and when we got to Pomona, Jack stopped for a gallon of gas. A gallon? He wanted to buy a pint. I did not. I always buy a gallon. Say, Jack, what's the idea of only buying one gallon at a time? Because I got too much money invested in the car already. Oh, <laughs> that's why. So what happened, Mary? Oh, God. Well, after we got the gas, the man put water in the radiator. And was Jack mad? Mad? Why? All of his peanuts got wet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's getting so you can't even roast a peanut anymore without people laughing at you. Uh, and now, if you fellas have all had your little fun, I will announce our play for tonight. Are there any objections? No, oh, no, no. 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 All right. Well, thanks. It's just too, too terribly decent of you. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, in response to numerous requests and by popular demand, tonight we are going to present that epic of the great outdoors. Another stirring episode of last year's famous serial... <laughs> what was that? Someone threw a stone through the window. A stone? Gosh, it hit Kenny on the head. It did? Ouch. <laughs> look, look, there's a note tied to it. What does it say? Wait a minute. Get this, fellas. It says... It's almost a year now and you haven't caught me yet. Yours truly, Cactus Face. <laughs> Cactus Face? So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to present another dramatic chapter in the life of Buck Benny. This will go on immediately after the next number. Play field. That was uh, Old King Cole, played by Phil Harris and his buckaroos. 
And, Phil, that was powerful nice tootin'. Powerful nice. Oh, it twart nothing. Twart nothing. <laughs> twart two, Phil. Twart two. You twell them, Jack. <laughs> Hush, gal. And now, ladies and gents, for another Rip Snorton play, the first of our new series entitled Buck Benny Rides Again, or Stop Your Breaking My Heart. <laughs> <laughs> the scene of tonight's play is the little cow town of Rump State, Texas As usual, I will play the part of Sheriff Buck Benny As tough an hombre as ever tied a rattlesnake into a slip knot Whoa! Hold it, boys Mary Livingston will be Daisy Carson, my sweetheart That's me Bill Harris will be her pappy Yeah, man And Don and Kenny will double as deputy sheriffs and horses <laughs> Nice going, boys. You get your salary in oats this week. <laughs> we now take you to the office of the sheriff of Cactus County a week before election day. Curtain. Music. Morning, Sheriff. Hiya, Buck. Morning, deputies. Anything happened last night? Yes, yeah, Sheriff, there was a hold-up in the First National Bank, a murder in Ike Muller's saloon, and a double feature at the Gem Theater. <laughs> double feature, eh? That's bad. Anything else? Yeah, somebody stole my badge. Stole your badge? Why didn't you have it pinned to your shirt? I did, and they got that, too. <laughs> well, here's another badge, and don't pin it to your pants. All right, but if they fall down, it's your fault. <laughs> Fine deputy. No wonder I'm worried about the election. Have you heard any talk about it, Wilson? Yes, yeah, Sheriff. Things look mighty tough for you. They do, eh? Yep. Your opponent, Dead Eye Cassidy's around telling everybody you're a low-down crook. Shucks, they know that. <laughs> and he says you're a lazy, good-for-nothing bum. Who cares? And he says you get your fingernails manicured. That's a lie! <laughs> I'll bite them off! <laughs> <laughs> what else did Dead Eye say? Why, he accuses you of being afraid to catch Cactus Face. I wasn't afraid, but that's the one thing this town's going to hold against me. And that sure worries me. Oh, well. Veeny, 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 tootsie, bally, 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 waiting for you. Veeny, 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 veeny. Doggone, I'm worried. Well, if you're so worried, Sheriff, why are you singing? I ain't singing good, am I? <laughs> well, anyway, boys, I'm going to make a campaign speech tonight that'll make Dead Eye Cassidy look like a nickel. Why, he said his speech is going to make you look like two cents. Why, that low-down price-cutting vomit. <laughs> he ain't got a chance. Is that the phone, Sheriff? It ain't the recess bell. <laughs> Answer it. Okay. Hello? Yes. Gosh, I don't know. I'll have to ask the sheriff. Who is it, Baker? It's your opponent, Dead Eye Cassidy. Oh, what does he want? He's writing his campaign speech and wants to know how to spell Laos. <laughs> Laos, eh? L-O-U... Hey, wait a minute! Hang up that phone! <laughs> of all the mean, underhanded tricks I ever heard, that's the lowest. Well, Sheriff, we better get down to the town hall if you're going to make your speech. That's right. Come on, boys. i got to stop off on the way and pick up Daisy. Let's go! Steady, partner. Come on, men! Yippee! <laughs> Nice doubling, boys. Wait here for me. I'll be out in a minute. Okay, okay sir. sir. Come in. Hello, Daisy. Hello, tall, dark, and flat-footed. <laughs> well, gal, your archers ain't exactly suffering from high altitude. Ain't you gonna ask me in? Sure, but wipe your boots off first. I did, and that's the lumpiest doormat I ever felt. Doggone, it's happy laying there again. <laughs> Oh, is that him? Hello, Frank. Hello, Buck. Well, Frank caused an machine to you. I thought you swore off drinking. Well, I did. I ain't drank nothing but milk for three weeks. Milk? And why are you in that condition? He feeds the cow gin. <laughs> he does? How do you milk her, Frank? On the run, Buck. On the run. <laughs> Well, 
Daisy, you ought to do something about your pappy. Don't you ever try to sober him up? Well, I put an aspirin tablet in his brandy, but he drinks around it. <laughs> well, he's pretty tricky. Say, Buck, yes? how's your campaign coming along? Just fine, Daisy, and I don't think my opponent, Dead Eye Cassidy, has got a chance. I don't know about that. He's been out all morning kissing babies. That won't do him no good. It won't, eh? These babies are old enough to vote. <laughs> Well, that's awful. Wait a minute. Did he kiss you, Daisy? If he didn't, I'm a run out of temperature. <laughs> well, gal, all I can say is I'll love you. And whether I win or lose, you'll marry me, won't you, gal? I can't never marry you, Buck, never, unless Pappy gives his consent. Well, then we'll leave it to him. He'll settle it. Either we gets married or we don't. What'll it be, Pappy? Straight brandy. <laughs> well, Daisy, guess I'll have to ask him when he's sober. That's what I said, Buck. I can't never marry you. <laughs> That's a doggone shame. Hey, Sheriff, better hurry up if you want to make your speech. That's right. Come on along, Daisy. We got to get to the town hall. All right. Look out there, Buck. Don't stumble over Pappy. Frank, why don't you quit laying in front of that door? All paint welcome on me and shut up. <laughs> I ain't got time. Come on, Daisy. And you'll hear a speech that'll go down in the history of Rump Steak, Texas. Let's go, boys! Buck Benny rides again! Well, here we are. Whoa, Buck! Whoa, whoa. Well, come on, Daisy. Here's the town hall. I'm a-trailing you, Buck. Hey, Deputy Baker. Yes, sir? Now listen to me, and this is important. I'm going to make my speech right now. And every time I come to a vital point, that is when I say something good about myself, I want you to holler, hooray! Hooray! That's it, now don't forget it. Come on, boys. Let's go inside. Howdy, Sheriff. Hi, Buck. Hi, boys. Hi. Passing out any campaign cigars, Buck? Nope. I did that the last time and darn near lost the election. <laughs> well, we're about ready for you, Sheriff. I'm ready, too. Did my opponent get here yet? Here he is, right here. Oh. Hello, did I? Hello, Spencer. <laughs> well, did I? What do you think of your chances? Put me down for a landslide. Don't be too sure. We're ready for our speeches, Joe. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the first speaker of the evening will be our own local G-man, Buck Benny. Thanks, Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been sheriff of this here county for the past four years. And whenever I've seen my duty, I've seen it. <laughs> My record during this time speaks for itself. <laughs> Them with cows, I'd feel better. <laughs> Friends, I worked and slaved in this community for four long years. And my opponent, did I, Cassidy, has the nerve to say that I'm a low-down conniving crook. Hooray! <laughs> Not there, Kenny. <laughs> But I'm not asking you to accept my word for it. I'm going to call on a young lady who will tell you the facts of my career. A young lady who has known me for a long time. Miss Daisy Carson. Ladies and gentlemen, I've known Buck for a long time. I thank you. Get up, Daisy. Say a little more. <laughs> okay. I think we ought to re-elect Buck Benny as sheriff. That a go. What if he is a coward? Is that a crime? Hmm. What if he is lazy? That's enough, gal. Thank you, Miss Cotton. <laughs> Ow! How did that arrow get in my leg? One of the Indians in the back row just voted. Well, I'll leave it in there. You might get a job posing for a valentine. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. And now, friends, I'm going to call upon his opponent. That brave and fearless citizen, the man of the hour, Dead Eye Cassidy. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, and livestock. <laughs> As I am standing here and looking down on you, I can only say this. Remember my slogan? You can fool all of the people some of the time, and some of the people any time, but no matter what time it is, my time is your time. <laughs> Give me a glass of water, please. 
I say the same thing that General Pershing said when he landed in France. What did he say? He said, Lafayette, what are you doing here? <laughs> uh, I'm not here to sing hallelujah. Nay, nay, of course. <laughs> I'm not here to insult my worthy opponent. All I say is, Buck Benny is a low down chiseler with a capital C. <laughs> Hold on now. Them fighting words and you can't get away with it. Quiet, cowboy, I'll smack you up and down. Let me at him, I'll show him. Ha, ha. Look out, Sheriff, he's a reaching for his gun. I'm a drawn too. <laughs> Ooh. Did he get you, Buck? I'm all right, Daisy. Quick, get a jackass, he needs a transfusion. <laughs> from you, dead eyes. I'm going to win this election all by myself, or my name ain't Buck Benny. Take it, Wilson. This will be continued next Sunday night. Who will be elected sheriff of Cactus County? Will it be Buck Benny? You said it. Will it be dead Eye Cassidy? I said it. Tune in next Sunday night and find out. Play, Phil. <laughs> with you again next Sunday night at the same time. So be sure and listen in and find out the results of the election. Well, Deasy, how do you think it'll turn out? You think the best man will win? Nope, Buck, I think you got a chance. <laughs> Makes me feel better. Good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris in his orchestra. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... We bring you a man who owns a watch, comma, a violin, comma, and an automobile, question mark. Jack Benny. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, uh, when you said automobile, question mark, I presume you were alluding to my Maxwell, were you not? <laughs> yes, Jack, I'm afraid I was. Well, Don, you can have your little fun. It's all right. Maxie and I can take it. <laughs> I have. I love every rattle in this dear little chassis. <laughs> well, did you drive it down tonight, Jack? Yes, Don, I drove right to the studio and everything was fine. Mary was with me and I had no trouble at all. Did I, Mary? Not with me, you didn't. <laughs> I'm talking about the car. What about that flat tire you had? Flat tire? Say, you could hardly feel it. <laughs> Believe me. Anyway, my tires, my tires were awfully thin. Well, what happened? Jack ran over a marshmallow and got a puncture. <laughs> well, no wonder it was toasted. <laughs> you forgot to mention that. Why didn't you change the tire, Jack? Because I haven't any tools, Phil, that's why. You haven't got any tools? No. I gave them to my sister for a charm bracelet. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's a novel gift. How does she like it? Oh, fine, but she can't get her arm off the floor. <laughs> Jack, are you still keeping up the payments on that car? What's that, Don? The I audience think... is laughing. I didn't quite get it. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well wait for a laugh, you know, kid. Well, what I said, Jack, is are you still keeping up the payments on that car? Well, I, uh... uh tell him what happened yesterday, Jack. Oh, it was nothing. Well, what was it, Mary? Well, we were riding down Wilshire Boulevard and Jack nearly fainted. Why? The car broke down right in front of the finance company. <laughs> well, I was going there anyway. Then why did you get out and run? Because. That's why. Gosh, I don't know what's the matter with you fellas. You're always picking on Jack. Thanks, Kenny. You think he was the only deadbeat in the world. <laughs> That's telling them. You said it. Oh, quiet. Got more important things to do tonight than to discuss me. You said it. So now, ladies and gentlemen, as we announced last week, we're... Come in. Hiya, Buck. Oh, hello, Andy. Hello, Andy. Glad to see you, Andy. You haven't been around for a couple of weeks. Well, Buck, we've been pretty busy getting ready for the holiday. Oh, that's right, yes. <laughs> Thursday is Thanksgiving. I almost forgot. Well, Ma didn't. Here, Buck, here's a turkey she sent over for you. A turkey? Gee, I was wondering what you had in that basket. Let me look. 
Oh, it's a live one. Thanks, Andy. Uh, you're welcome. Gee, that's a tough-looking bird. How will I kill it? Well, don't use an axe. We tried it four times. <laughs> oh, yes, I see those notches on its neck. <laughs> but no kidding, Andy. Is a turkey really that tough? <laughs> tough, it chased her bull clear out of the barn. <laughs> A fine present to give me If I can't eat it, what am I going to do with it? It'll make you a darn good watchdog <laughs> Say, there's an idea huh? Yeah, tie it to your car, you won't have to lock it <laughs> <laughs> You know, Andy, this gang has been ribbing me about that Maxwell of mine But it doesn't faze me, no. Say, that reminds me, Buck Every time you talk about that car of yours Paw slams off the radio He does? What's your paw got against a Maxwell? He courted Ma in one <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Andy. I didn't mean to revive any unpleasant memories. Anyway, I'm glad you got here early because tonight we're going to do a big play and we've got to get started on it right away. Are we all set, fellas? Sure. All, right. All, right. All, right. all right, boys, let's settle down. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as we announced last week, for our feature attraction tonight, we are going to present our version of Columbia Pictures' phenomenal success, that Frank Capra production, Lost Horizon. <laughs> Now, um... <laughs> now, in our version of Lost Horizon... <laughs> all right, boy, that's enough. In our version, we will all portray our own characters. That is, I will be Jack Benny, Mary will be Mary. Mary, pour some whipped cream over down and put them in a dish. What'll I use, the Rose Bowl? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good idea. Hey, Buck, am I in this? Of course, Andy. What uh, what character would you like to play? Well, I'd like to wrestle with Ronald Coleman's part. Oh, you would? <laughs> I'd like to wrestle with Coleman. <laughs> Quiet. And now, folks, in our play, Lost Horizon... <laughs> now, cut it out now, will you? Put that thing down. Okay. Hmm, darn that sound, man. Now, let's get on with our play. Uh, by the way, Jack, what does Lost Horizon mean? Well, Mary, it's, uh, well, it's a sort of, a. Uh... Oh, Don, do you know what Lost Horizon means? To whom? To whom? <laughs> to you. That's to whom. <laughs> to whom? Well, I don't know. Don't ask me. Well, I want to find out. I'm going to ask Kenny. Kenny? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny. What are you laughing at? Oh, nothing, Kenny. Go ahead, ask him, Mary. You'll make him feel good. All right. Say, Kenny, what does Lost Horizon mean? Well, uh, Lost Horizon is symbolic of the utopia that we mortals are forever seeking in our eternal quest for happiness. Why, Kenny! <laughs> what was that? Kenny fainted! <laughs> Quick! Get a glass of water! Kenny, Kenny, play, Phil! Kenny! Kenny! Yeah, it was all my fault. <laughs> we're, we're jokes. Be quiet, Jack. Take it easy. Buck Maxwell rides again. <laughs> Mr. Benny. Mr. Benny. Yeah? <laughs> What is it? I am here to grant your wish and ease your troubled mind, to take you away to a place where there is nothing but happiness. I will give you peace and relaxation. Who are you? My name is Chang. Chang! I am here to help you, my son. Gee, Mr. Chang, didn't I see you in a picture last night called Lost Horizon? Yes. By the way, how did you like me in it? I thought you were swell. How did you like me in Artists and Models? I am here to help you, my son. <laughs> Oh, come with me, and we will journey to the land of eternal youth and everlasting bliss. Gee. To that earthly paradise where all is serene. Gosh. To that garden spot of the universe. If you're a real estate man, I'll scream. <laughs> fear not, my son, fear not. I am taking you to Shangri-La. Shangri-La. Come with me. Wait, shall we go on my Maxwell? Your Maxwell? <laughs> <laughs> Look, 
Mr. Chang, what happened? Where are we? We are in Shangri-La, my son. Gaze upon its majestic beauty. Behold its shimmering splendor. Feast your eyes upon its peaceful tranquility. <laughs> oh, this is so beautiful. So wonderful. Ain't it the nuts? <laughs> Oh, how romantic this place is. How charming. How utterly ut. You ain't seen nothing yet. Gee, I can't get over it, Mr. Chang. Everybody looks so youthful. Eternal youth. That is the secret of Shangri-La. Oh, look. Look at that beautiful young girl coming towards us. That is my wife. She's 385 years old. 385. My, what a nice figure. And such broad shoulders. Yes, she just had her hips lifted. <laughs> Oh, I see. Come here, my dear. I want you to meet Mr. Benny. Hello, Junior. Hello, Mrs. Chang. Gee, I can't believe that you're 385. My husband is 390. And this is our son, Clambake. Clambake? What a name. He doesn't like it either. Oh. Say hello to Mr. Benny. Hello. I'm 312. Stripped or with your clothes on? <laughs> You know, Mr. Chang, I think I'm going to like it here. Everyone likes it here, my boy. For in Shangri-La, every wish comes true. Isn't that amazing? Say, who's that man standing over there with those five boys? Eddie Cantor. Ah, oh, Shangri-La! <laughs> Wait a minute. Am I seeing things? Can that be Andy Devine coming towards us? Yes, that's him. Hello, Andy. Hi, Buck. Why, Andy? That doesn't sound like you. Well, I'll tell you, Buck. Every time I come to Shangri-La, my throat clears up and my voice is as clear as a bell. Well, that's the most unbelievable thing yet. <laughs> Say, Buck, you remember when I used to sound like this? Hiya, Buck! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. But I'm all right now. So am I! <laughs> Get together, boys. Tell me, Mr. Chang. What miracle causes such a change? It is no miracle, my son. You see this fountain here? Yea, yea. Anyone who... <laughs> anyone who drinks of its waters immediately acquires a voice of silvery tone. You mean if I drank a glass of water from this fountain, my voice would improve? Yes. And I could sing? Even better than Kenny Baker. As good will be enough. Then just take half a glass. Here. Oh, boy. Gee, this tastes good. Me, 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 me. I feel it working. Listen, Mr. Chang. Oh, gee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Congratulations, my boy. It was splendid. Oh, Mr. Chang, these compliments. I really don't deserve them. I'll say you don't. <laughs> Why, Kenny, what are you doing in Shangri-La? Is that where I am? Yes, Kenny, in Shangri-La, where every wish comes true. Oh, boy, I wish I had a ham sandwich. A ham sandwich? Is that all you can wish for? All right, put mustard on it. <laughs> hmm. One ham coming up. Smear it! <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Hiya, Jack, old boy. How do you like it here? Phil! Gee, it's good to see you. Mr. Chang, you know Phil Harris, don't you? Why, sure, he comes down here every weekend. Hmm, never told me. Are you having a good time, Phil? Am I? You know, Jack, I was out to lunch with the cutest little girl. What a honey. Cute, huh, Phil? How did you happen to meet her? She went to school with my grandmother. <laughs> no kidding. Has she got a friend? Yeah, but I got rid of him. <laughs> oh. So long, Jack. Goodbye. Come, my boy. It is growing late, and I have promised to present you to the High Lama. He is 900 years old. 900 years old? Isn't he awfully wrinkled? No, we have him pressed once a week. <laughs> well, I'd love to meet him. Say, is that him standing over there addressing that crowd? No, that is one of our famous orators who sways the multitude with his every word. Shall we, Isra? Let Silence! Before us is the palace of the High Lama. Oh, what a magnificent building. It's even more beautiful than Grauman's Chinese. <laughs> Grauman's Chinese? 
Why, it's more beautiful than the Taj Mahal by moonlight. Oh, let me look again. Gazooks, you're right. <laughs> Quiet! The High Lama approaches to greet us. Be prepared. 900 years old. He must be all dried up. Yes, don't light any matches around him. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm nervous. He will not harm you, my son. Behold, the High Lama! Your Excellency, I beg to present Jack Benny. Your Excellency. Hello, Stanza. <laughs> why, why, Schlepperman? Quiet, quiet. I'm a llama now. A llama? Yeah, and I thought I was joining the Elks. <laughs> you know, Schlepp. Gee, it's hard to believe it. Are you really 900 years old? You said it. I've been in the march of time so long I got bunions. <laughs> well, tell me. Tell me, Slap. How are you doing here? Oh, Jackie boy, am I making money. But everybody here lives to be 300 years old, 400, 500. There's no limit. I tell you, Jack, I'm cleaning up. Well, what do you do? I sell birthday candles. <laughs> Birthday candles? You must be making a fortune. Say, is your wife here with you? Yeah, she sells matches. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're so successful. Tell me, Slap, who's the head man around here, you or your wife? Well, I wear the pants, but somebody has to help me out with them, you know. A thousand pardons, Your Excellency. <laughs> I must leave you now, Mr. Benny. Oh, will I see you again, Mr. Chang? No, I go as mysteriously as I came. Like a shadow in the forest. Like the wind in the night. That didn't sound like wind, but it got a laugh, anyway. Shangri-la-la, -la, Shangri-la-la, -la, Shangri-la-la. Ah, la, here Shangri -la comes my daughter. I want you to meet her. Hello, my little orange blossom. Hello, prune face. <laughs> this is my daughter, Mary Lama. Go ahead. Shake hello with Mr. Benny. Hello, Mr. Benny. Well, Mary Lama. See, you look just like a Mary I know back home. How old are you? 116 and never been kissed. 116, so young. Yes, and already she wants to get married. <laughs> well, kiddies, I have to toddle along now. It's time for my dancing lesson. Dancing lesson? Yes, I'm learning the Suzy Q. <laughs> I've been here so long, I got a blow feeling. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> well, Miss Lammer, your father's pretty active for a man his age. Go on, every time he sneezes, we have to pick him up. It's true. There he goes again. <laughs> You know, Mary, you don't mind if I call you that, do you? No. Let me show you around the palace grounds. You love the flowers and gardens and waterfalls. Follow me. Gee, I've often imagined a place as beautiful as this. Gosh, it's like a fairy tale. Look at those gladiolas blooming in the sunlight. And these snapdragons. Aren't they lovely? And look at these tiger lilies. I think I'll pluck one. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> They ought to be muzzled. <laughs> Say, who's your gardener, anyway? Frank Buck. Oh. And right here's where I spend many happy hours. Let us tarry a while by this waterfall. Waterfall? <laughs> Rather small, isn't it? Well, it ain't Niagara, but it's wet. Oh. Why don't you take a dip in this lovely pool? What, with my clothes on? They can stand it, too. All right, I think I will. Look out now. I'm going to jump in. Here goes. One for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, and four to wee! Gee, this water is so cool and invigorating. It's deep, too. Deep? Oh, I forgot. I can't swim. I'm sinking. I'm sinking, Mary. Mary, save me. I'm drowning. Help! 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 Jack! Jack, wake up. What's the matter with you? Help. Mary, where am I? Wake up, Jack. You're in my apartment. 
Oh, Mary, I just had the most wonderful dream. And all of a sudden, I thought I was drowning. You're telling me, get your head out of the goldfish bowl. <laughs> oh, yes. Play, Phil. Give me a towel, Mary. <laughs> We're with you again next week at the same time. I hope you all enjoyed our play tonight. And, Say, Buck, uh, yeah. I don't think much of that Shangri-La idea. Why, Andy, wouldn't you like to have your voice clear and beautiful all the time? Gosh, no, I wouldn't be able to get any work. <laughs> I never thought of that, but as far as I'm concerned, I wish there really was a place like Shangri-La where you could lay around and relax. Don't you, Mary? I'll take Palm Springs. Oh, that's right. It's much closer. Yeah, good night, folks. Good night. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who every Sunday night at the same time walks up to the microphone, looks it square in the eye, and says... Hello again. This is Jack Denny talking. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, Don, that was a cute opening. That was a nice introduction. And nice teamwork, too, I thought. You and I certainly work well together, don't we? Oh, yes, we do, Jack. It's remarkable the way we seem to balance each other. What was that, Don? I say it's remarkable the way we balance each other. I think so. Of course, we would have a little trouble on a seesaw. <laughs> say, Don, can you imagine the both of us on a seesaw? Me way up in the clouds and you down on the good earth? <laughs> Gee, it makes me dizzy. Oh, boy. Well, uh, Jack, do you want me to get off? Woo! Don't you dare! <laughs> My feet are flat enough now. <laughs> anyway, Don, we're too old to be playing around on a seesaw. Yeah, let's go over to the sand pile. Oh, let's drop this silly talk. We're getting a little bit goofy. Aren't we all? Hello, Jack. <laughs> well, Kenny, of all people, what are you doing here? Oh, I was on my way to the movies and I got lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, you couldn't have got lost in a better place. We can use you here. Yeah. Say, Jack, I want to thank you for inviting me over to your house for Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, that's all right, Kenny. You're always welcome. And I want to thank you, too, Jack. And I also want to congratulate you for cooking that big dinner all by yourself. Oh, it was nothing, Don. I always do that. You may not know this, but I'm considered to be quite a cook. Oh, you are? Oh, for years I've been known as Prudence Benny of Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> and my pies. You know, I'm famous for my lemon marinju. <laughs> marinju? Well, that's marangay. Mary, oh, is that the way it's pronounced? Oh, gee, you learn something every day. Eh? Well, well, so you cooked the Thanksgiving dinner all by yourself, eh, Jack? Yes, Phil, with my very own hands. Why didn't you come? Did you have a previous engagement? No, just a hunch. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, well, you missed something. It was a grand meal. We had all the trimmings and everything you wanted to drink. Everything. Gee, everybody else had wine with each course, and you made me drink milk. Well, Kenny, you're too young. Besides, milk is good for you. Milk goes with anything. Doesn't go with my brown suit. <laughs> well, the turkey was good, wasn't it? Say, Jack, don't tell me you served that old bird Andy Devine gave you last week. Yes, Phil, and it was all right, wasn't it, Don? Well, it surprised me, Jack. That turkey looked so tough, and yet it turned out so tender. What did you do? I cooked it with a blowtorch. <laughs> That did it. A blowtorch, that's a fine way to cook a turkey. Why didn't you put it in the oven? I tried to, Phil, but it kept jumping out all the time. <laughs> I can't understand it either. I put paperweights in the dressing. <laughs> oh, hello, Mary. Hello, kitchen mechanic. Hmm. Well, Mary, did you enjoy my Thanksgiving dinner? No kidding. How was it, Mary? Oh, it was swell. We had everything from soup to bicarbonate of soda. <laughs> hmm. And what mashed potatoes? I'll say. They were so lumpy, Jack had to serve them in the sugar bowl. I didn't have to. I was short of dishes. Gee, I thought those mashed potatoes were swell. They were so nice and tan. Yeah. <laughs> tan potatoes? Well, the stove was crowded, and I had to cook them under the sun lamp. Oh. Anyway, the turkey was delicious. I got a wing and it was swell. I got a leg and it kicked me. <laughs> oh, it did. I got a neck with a collar button in it. Why don't you stay out of the kitchen, Jack? That's a woman's job. Now, Phil, that's the most ridiculous thing you've ever said. That's ridiculous. I mean, men are better in everything. Our greatest cooks are men. Our greatest dress designers are men. Our greatest dancers are men. Our greatest... <laughs> 
What are you laughing at? When you get to mothers, watch out. <laughs> well, the greatest fathers are men. Got that over. Anyway, it's a fine thing to come to my house for dinner and criticize it. That was real home cooking. Why, you never tasted such rolls in all your life. Boy, were they heavy. They were not. I had to jack mine up to butter it. <laughs> it's a fine appreciation after the trouble I went to. I work and slave over a hot stove, and what do I get? Oh, Jack, now what's the matter with you? They're only kidding. Why, everybody had a good time and enjoyed the dinner. Oh, no, they didn't. And here's something else I wasn't going to mention, but I will now. This will fix you guys. Uh I had five people to dinner, and six spoons were missing. (laughs) Six? I took two. (laughs) Well, give me one back. Don't be a pig. Do you want... Do you want the one from the Brown Derby? <laughs> no, the one from the Ambassador. I've got a set. <laughs> and now if you fellas are all through heckling my dinner, maybe we can have a selection from the orchestra. Play, Phil. And for two cents, I tear up my cookbook. <laughs> Well, that was You Can't Stop Me From Dreaming, played by the orchestra with a vocal chorus by Phil Harris. Say, Phil, that was quite a surprise. I didn't know you were going to slip in a solo there. Did you, Kenny? No, I didn't either. Oh, it was just a sudden impulse. It was, eh? What made you sing? I'm mad at the piano player, and he hates my voice. (laughs) Oh, well, you certainly fixed him. What are you mad at him for? Oh, he tells everybody that I don't know how to lead an orchestra. Why, that's unreasonable. Oh, it's reasonable, all right, but I don't like it. (laughs) Well, I don't blame you, Phil. I know how you feel. There are people right on this program who think they know more about comedy than I do. Yeah. (laughs) Kenny. But it's true, Phil. Everybody wants to be a comedian. They all think they can get laughs. I know, Jack. But for real laughs, none of us can top that Maxwell of yours. Boy, that's really terrific. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Jack, how's the old tub behaving? Oh, it's all right, Don. I've had no trouble, but I, um... Uh, well, I... I think I'm going to get rid of it. Get rid of it? Why? Oh, because nobody has respect for private property anymore. That's why. <laughs> Tell them what they did to your car, Jack. What happened? Oh, it burns me up just thinking about it. Now, what was it, Jack? Well, I stopped in the store for a cigar. And when I came out, somebody had written on my car... Lulu loves Butch. (laughs) Gee, I was mad. Lulu loves Butch? That's awful. I didn't mind that so much, but I don't even know the people. (laughs) Well, it's your own fault, Jack. You brought it on yourself when you put that sign on the back of your car. Sign? Well, what does it say, Mary? Tune in on Jack Benny every Sunday night. (laughs) Well, that's legitimate advertising. What burns me up? Why don't Butch and Lulu get their own car? Oh, forget about Butch and Lulu. Well, anyway, I'm going to get rid of it. Did you put that ad in the paper, Mary? Yes, here it is. Uh, For sale or exchange, Maxwell Touring Car. All modern features, including self-starter and one-man top. Excellent view, only three blocks from the station. (laughs) Say, well, what's that got to do with it? My uncle sold a house that way. Oh, oh, I see. Car in first-class condition... Owner satisfied, but could feel better. It's a fine ad. Huh? Uh, right, wire, or phone, Jack Benny, care of Lonely Hearts Club, Hollywood. <laughs> I don't belong to that anymore. Anyway, that ad ought to bring some results. Huh? Say, Jack, yeah. I can't understand what you want to sell your car for. I told you why. Well, gosh, you, you've only had it a little while, and... You're always bragging about it and fussing over it and going around with it all the time? Well. And now you want to part with it? Yes, I do. Gee, you're fickle. (laughs) Well, Kenny, if you're so interested in my car, why don't you take it off my hands? Oh, I might at that. What do you want for it, Jack? Well, uh, well, let me see. Hmm. Well, Kenny, would, uh, would $95 be too much? Hades, yes. Oh, it would. Well, if you're really interested in my car, maybe I can shave it a little. Oh, don't bother fixing it up. Well, Kenny, I can see that you don't want a car, so forget about it. Well, I'll think it over while I'm singing my song. Yeah, do that. What are you going to sing, Kenny? Moon over Manakura from the picture Hurricane. Well, that's a beautiful number, and right up your alley. Oh, wait a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? 
Are you the party who had an ad in the paper regarding a Maxwell? Yes, I am. Are you in the market? I was, but I got out just in time. <laughs> Goodbye. Now there's a lucky fellow. Sing, <laughs> That was, that was Moon Over Manicura from Hurricane, sung by Kenny Baker. And you know, Kenny, there's one thing that always impresses me. It's that last note. Goes on and on. Why do you hold it so long? I never give up a song without a struggle. <laughs> oh, well, it's very effective. But, Kenny, in order to keep your voice in such perfect condition, you must do a lot of practicing. I'll say. I sing in a bathtub every morning. Oh. And you know, Jack, I had the most embarrassing thing happen to me once. What was it? I reached for a high note and swallowed the soap. The soap? Ooh, boy, that must have been awful. Yeah, I bubbled for a week. <laughs> Bubbled Baker. <laughs> Mary. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for want of something better to do, tonight we are going to offer a play in the form of a nature study. A little drama entitled The Private Life of a Bumblebee, which we will present in three buzzes and one sting. It certainly will. Quiet. <laughs> Now, I will play the part of a rosebud. <laughs> and Don, Kenny, and Phil will be insects as usual. Now, this will go on. Um... Uh, there's a the phone, Jack. Let it ring. We've got a program to do. Oh. Okay. Maybe somebody wants to buy your car. Oh, oh, yes. Give it to me. Hello, Jack Benny talking. Uh, would you like to have a talk? Uh... Oh, slap her, Ma. Let me talk to you. It's my nickel. Go ahead. Well, slap, look. I'm busy right now. Call me back later, will you? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got a customer for your car. You have? Who is it? My wife's brother. Oh, your brother-in-law. Well, look, Slap, if he's a relative of yours, I'd rather not sell him my car. Go ahead. It'll serve him right. <laughs> well, okay. Bring him right over. Where are you, Slap? I'm around the corner in the drugstore in my new overcoat and a telephone booth. Hmm, are you standing up or sitting down? I don't know. It's dark in here. <laughs> Well, look, Slab, bring your brother-in-law right up, and if I sell the car, I'll give you a nice commission. Why not? Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, Mary, that ad did get results. Huh? And... Come in. Hello, Slanza. Slapperman, how did you get here so quick? What quick? I got stuck in the elevator. Say, <laughs> Jack, I want you to meet my brother-in-law, Anatole Ginsburg. <laughs> well, 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 this is a pleasure, Mr. Ginsburg. I'm very, very happy to know you. Hello. Uh, well, Mr. Ginsburg, I understand you're very much interested in buying my Maxwell. Is that right? I'm not telling. <laughs> now, look, if you want to buy my car, Mr. Ginsburg... Uh, say, Jack. What, Mary? I don't think you've got a Chinaman's chance with this guy. What Chinaman? Who's a Chinaman? <laughs> if the hat fits, put it on. <laughs> Stay out of this, Mary. Now, look, Mr. Ginsburg, if you want to buy my car, it'll have to be a cash proposition. You understand that? Ah, oh, don't worry, Jack. He's got the cash. But only last week in the Irish sweepstakes, he won a prize amounting to... It's a lie. Boys, boys. It was in the neighborhood of $5,000. Why did you tell him? Did I say exactly? Now, look, fellas, wait a minute. Let's not take up a lot of time arguing. Mr. Ginsburg, do you want to buy the car or not? Yes. Don't be yesing with my money. <laughs> Quiet, quiet, Anatole. Behave yourself. Be a gentleman. Where's your etiquette? Look who's talking etiquette. If it wasn't for me, you couldn't even speak English. Is that so? <laughs> yeah. You said it. Now I'm satisfied. <laughs> hey, boys, what is this anyway? The affairs of Anatole. <laughs> now look here, Anatole. A man with your money should own a car like this. Now I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll let you have it for $95 because I like you. Make it 50 and drop the affection. <laughs> now, look, Slap, I'd like to sell the car to your brother-in-law, but $95 is the lowest I can take. I'm voting out. All right, $85. I'm still voting. Now, go ahead. I don't care. Wait a minute, Anatole. Please, don't be a chimpanzee. Come here. For who's Mr. Nick the Maxwell? What's the name of you? The doctor not the <laughs> I need it like a hole in a head. And besides, she looks like a crook. I resent that. Now, look, at what's going to happen here? Am I selling the car or not? Ah, hold on, Jackie boy. I know how to cleanse the deal. 
Take us out for a ride, and if Anatol likes the car, he'll buy it Anatol a time. <laughs> All right, I'll take you out for a ride, and then we'll talk business. That okay with you, Mr. Ginsburg? I'll take the ride anyhow. Well, he's weakening, Jack. All right, you and Anatol can sit in the back seat. You'll find it nice and comfortable. Uh, play something, Phil. Come on, Mary, you can sit in front with me. I will not. Quiet, I bought cushions this morning. Let's go, boys. So long, gang. So long, Jack. We're Come on, Anatol, long. make it snuffy. All Come right, on. don't push me. Well, Mary, the car's rolling along pretty good. No trouble so far. We've only gone half a block. Well, is that bad? Say, Mary, turn around and see if the boys are enjoying the ride. Okay. Oh, Jack, I can only see Schlepperman. What? Hey, Schlepp, where's Anatole? I'm sitting on him. He wants to jump out. <laughs> well, I'll speed her up. You'll see something. Hold on, everybody. Hey, what's that? I wonder what that noise is. So the spark plugs are doing the Big Apple. <laughs> hey, Anatole, how do you like the way the car runs? Quiet, I'm getting seasick. <laughs> and I ain't got an appetite neither. Hey, Jack, look out. Look out for that bump. What bump? Oh, I see it. Well, that wasn't so bad, eh, Mary? <laughs> no, but your friends just left. <laughs> They did. Hey, Slap, Anatole, where are you? They fell out. Well, I better go back and get them. Wait a minute, fellas, I'm coming right back. Don't bother, I wouldn't buy it anyhow. I don't blame them. That's a fine thing, Mary. Why didn't you notice that bump sooner? You're driving. I am not. You've got the steering wheel. I didn't before we hit that bump. <laughs> well, give it back. You haven't even got a driver's license. Might as well go home now. Better stop at this gas station. That bump knocks the air out of my tires. Me too. <laughs> nice landing, Jack. <laughs> well, I was going pretty fast there, you know. Good evening, sir. What'll it be? I'd like some nice, fresh air. For breathing or tires? Tires, of course. Okay. Do you want any gasoline? No. He makes his own. I do not. <laughs> All right. Put in two gallons, buddy. Two gallons? Is this car on a diet? Don't get gay, just put it in. Okay, sporty. <laughs> Where's the gas tank? Huh? Where's the gas tank? Under the seat. Get up, Mary. Gee, is that the gas tank? Yeah. I've been using it for an ashtray. That's fine. Right here, bud. Hey, Bill, put in two gallons. I've got it. Hey, that's enough. I said two gallons. I'm sorry, mister, but we gave you two and a half. Well, I'm not going to pay for it. I asked for two gallons, and that's what I want. It's only a matter of eight cents. I don't care what it is. You made the mistake, not me. But, gee, it's only eight cents. <laughs> Young man, do you realize that a family in China can live for two weeks on eight cents? So can you. Quiet. <laughs> oh, Jack, don't be so tight. I'm not tight. It's not the money. It's the principle of the thing. I'm not going to pay for one more drop than I ordered. All right, I'll match you. Double or nothing. Oh, no, you won't. What do you think I am, a chump? Quiet, Mary. <laughs> you guessed it. All right, buddy, what do I owe you? Two gallons, that's 32 cents. You want to pay it all now? <laughs> yes, and don't be smart. Here you are. Come on, Mary, let's go. Come on. <laughs> Doggone it. I'll be glad when you get rid of this piece of junk. Oh, it'll start this time. <laughs> the matter with me anyway? Hey, you, where do you think you're going? I'm sorry, mister. It was all my fault. Of all that careless dope. Say, I ought to punch you right in my nose. Hey, you, you can't say that to Jack. He can, too. Quiet. <laughs> now, look here, mister. If I've damaged your car, I'll pay for it. You better or you'll be sorry. Oh, yeah? Let's beat it, Mary, before I lose my temper. Oh, 
Oh, boy, you were lucky that time. I wasn't scared of him. He didn't upset me. Yeah, then take that cigar out of your ear and let's go. <laughs> oh, I was looking for that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, we're off, Mary. Yippee! Yippee! with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Say, Mary, isn't it funny how nice and smooth the car runs when you and I are all alone in it, huh? Yeah, that's always the way. Yeah. Oh, darn it, another flat. Fix it, Mary. No, it's your turn. That's right. Good night, folks. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris in this orchestra. For now, ladies and gentlemen... We bring you a rag, a bone, and a hank of gray hair, Jack Benny. Well, hello again. This is Jack Benny, the Silver Fox, talking. <laughs> and, Don, that was a nice literary introduction you gave me. I didn't know you were so familiar with Shakespeare. Why, Shakespeare didn't write that, uh... Jack, you know, a oh, rag, Jack's a bone. Name, Don. Yeah, Jack, is that the name? Well, that's the name. Well, anyway, Shakespeare didn't write it, Jack. You know, a rag, a bone, and a hank of hair was written by Rudyard Kipley. Oh, did Kippy whip that one up? <laughs> yes, but adding the word gray was my own idea. Well, ain't you the one. Mm. But I didn't mind that, Don. I'm quite proud of my gray hair. Besides, it's not due to age. I'm just uh, prematurely gray. Oh, prematurely. Yes, up to the age of 19, my hair was as black as the ace of spades. Well, what happened? Mother Nature trumped it. <laughs> the last time I'll play cards with her. Oh, don't worry about it, Jack. Personally, I like your gray hair. Oh, do you, Phil? Yes, it matches your complexion. <laughs> so it does, eh? Anyway, you should talk about someone else's hair with those curly locks you've got. What's the matter with them? You look like a big, fat Shirley Temple. <laughs> Oh, yeah? yeah? Well, you look like George Arliss 20 years from now. Is that so? Well, I don't mind looking like George Arliss. He's one of our greatest actors. That's where the resemblance ends. <laughs> Get a load of Phil's hair, folks, so wavy seagulls follow him down the street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yours is so dead buzzards follow you. <laughs> Hmm, that's fine talk. Boys, boys, now what's going on here? Nothing, Don. We're just giving each other the bird. <laughs> wow, that was a hot one. <laughs> the audience will cool it off. Not tonight, Phil. I'm a little too fast for you. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Did I miss anything? Oh, nothing much. Don started kidding me about my gray hair, and then Phil picked it up. Who's got it now? <laughs> Mary, I'm talking about my own hair. Oh, those. Yes. Yes, those. I've still got plenty of hair left. Yeah, stick a palm tree on your head and you'll have an oasis. Well, that's silly. Imagine a palm tree on my head. You could have monkeys for dandruff. <laughs> oh, Mary, that was a good one. Thanks, Phil. Yes, you two are so clever. Why don't you get your own program? Oh, Jack, we wouldn't leave you. No, no you're too good a stooge. <laughs> well, I'm glad you appreciate my humble efforts Oh, Jack, look, here comes our wandering boy Hello, Kenny Hello, Kenny Hello Why, oh, Kenny, what's the matter with you? Oh, nothing, I'm just burnt up, that's all About what? Oh, I had another fight with my girl That's all we do lately, fight, fight, fight Well, don't take it to heart, Kenny Those are just lovers' quarrels, that's all What happened? Oh, she invites me over to her house all the time, and after I get there, all she does is make fudge for me. Fudge? <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? She won't put nuts in it. <laughs> now, isn't that awful? I don't see how you put up with it. Oh, and that's not all. Every night when I ask her to go to the movie, she wants to play post office instead. Boy, is she dumb. <laughs> Dumb? What's dumb about playing post office? It isn't even open at night. <laughs> Why, Kenny, post office is a kissing game. Haven't you ever played it? No. How does it go? It's very simple. They call out your name and the name of a girl. And then you go out in the next room and you kiss her. Then what do you do? 
<laughs> that's all there is, Kenny. That's the game. Well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard of. It's not silly. Everybody has played post office. Sure, it's lots of fun. Why, well, I've played it a million times. Of course. Did you ever play it, Phil? Yes. <laughs> Oh, hey, come on, Mary, show Kenny how it goes. Now, look, Kenny, Mary's supposed to be in another room, and I'm the postman. So I send you to Mary to get the letter. Isn't that the way it starts, Phil? I never bother with the preliminaries. <laughs> oh. Now, come on, Kenny, put your arms, put your arms around Mary. Like this? Now, get your elbow out of my ear. Come on, Kenny, put your arms around her. Oh, I'll bet this is a trap. <laughs> it is not. Go ahead, now, don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. Then why are you trembling? Say, hey, everything helps. <laughs> That's right. Now, now kiss him, Mary. What? Kiss him. Go ahead, kiss Kenny. Oh, you play with him, Jack. <laughs> oh, well, let's forget the whole thing. Kenny will never learn the game. Well, let him wait till the post office opens. Yeah. Hiya, Buck. How about letting me in on this? Oh, hello, Andy. Hello. <laughs> Why, Andy, I didn't hear you walk in. You were so quiet. Doggone it, I forgot my shoes. Uh, What's going on here anyway? Oh, we're just showing Kenny how to play post office. Do you want to play? Uh, hold my coat, Buck. Who's the victim? Well. Good night, Jack. <laughs> now, come back here, Mary. Say, Buck, I listened to your program last week. Are you on the level about wanting to get rid of your old Maxwell? Yes, I am, Andy. Would you like to buy my car? Well, that all depends. Depends on what? Whether he's crazy or not. Now, quiet, Mary. We're talking business. Say, Buck, what do you want? What do you want for your car? Well, Andy, I started out asking $95, but I'll probably end up with 80 I don't think you'll even finish in the money. <laughs> now, look, Andy, are you interested in my car or not? Well, Pa and Ma were discussing it last night, and Pa thought I ought to buy it. He did? Yeah, but Ma changed his mind with a right cross to the chin. Well, I'm sorry your paw got in wrong on account of my car. Uh, don't worry about him. When he comes to, he'll run her bow-legged. Well, look, Andy, let you and I go over here in the corner, and I'll make you a nice proposition on that Maxwell. Okay, Buck. Sing, Kenny. Now, look here, Andy. Despite all rumors, my car's in excellent condition. Why, that Maxwell is good to the last drop. And another thing. <laughs> that was Blossoms on Broadway, sung by Kenny Baker. As fine a tenor as these old ears have ever heard and these old eyes have ever seen. Very well done, my lad. Yowza, yowza. Gee, that sounds just like Ben Burney. Ben Burney? Yes, why don't you be original? I wasn't imitating Burney. I've always said yowza. Even when I was a little baby, I used to say yowza. <laughs> That's funny. When I was a baby, I used to say dada. Well, that was popular, too, yes. <laughs> you know, Jack, when I was a baby, I used to say glub glub. Well, Don, some... <laughs> now, so some babies used to say Dada and some Glub Glub. I was the Goo Goo type. <laughs> well, that shows you there are all kinds of them. Uh, what kind of a baby were you, Phil? Bottle. Oh. <laughs> well, put it away while we're broadcasting. Say, Buck. You know what? Yes, Andy. You may not believe this, but when I was a baby, I was the prettiest thing you ever saw. Yeah. <laughs> Cute as the devil. I'll bet you were at that. Huh? I had blue eyes and blonde curls and dimples all over my face. Dimples all over your face? Yeah, I looked like a golf ball. <laughs> you did? <laughs> yes, sir. Ma used to put me to sleep with a niblick. <laughs> well, Andy, didn't your paw object? He was caddying. Quiet. Well, Andy, you're still cute. You really are. I might even add that you're handsome. <laughs> oh, you just said that to make me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> and it sure got results. <laughs> well, we can't stay cute forever. We all get older, you know. Time marches on. Must have stepped on Andy. Mary. <laughs> Say, Buck, I got a picture of me here taken when I was six months old. Want to see it? Sure, I'd love to. <laughs> here you are. Oh, isn't that adorable? Let me see it, Jack. Yeah, me too. Say, that's really something. Six months old, gee. <laughs> but you know, Andy, I don't seem to recognize you in this picture. Well, I'll tell you, Buck, they never could get me to face the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> you can't tell me from Robert Taylor there. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, that's right, Andy. Say, Mary, isn't this a cute picture? Yeah, but his ears are awfully big for a baby. I noticed that, too. They are at that. Gee, Andy, did you really have such big ears? <laughs> yeah, they had to lock me up during the rabbit season. <laughs> Well, here's your picture back, Andy, and don't you ever lose it. I won't. You know, fellas, all this talk about babies kind of makes you stop and think, doesn't it? It's the mystery of life. We're born, we cry, we grow up, we mature, and yet, what are we? I'm a Republican. Kenny. I don't know, fellas, it's a, it's a problem, isn't it? We start from the cradle just babies, and then it seems like... I don't know. It seems like overnight we're transformed into full-grown beings. And yet, do we really change? Do we really blossom? Oh, shut up. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there's no use trying to be a philosopher around here. And now, ladies and gentlemen, while we're waiting, Phil Harris and his orchestra will play Who from Sonny. Hit it, Phil. Now, wait a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Would you like to see my baby picture? No, I wouldn't. Then I won't have one taken. Goodbye. (laughs) You know, fellas, I'll bet $8 he's nuts. There was a brand new number called Who from Sonny. Played... Certainly some new tunes, Phil, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, as this is the climax of the football season, and it being such a popular sport, tonight we are going to present a little drama of the gridiron entitled The Big Game or Button Button Who's Got the Ball. Owing to the shortage of actors, I will play a double role, that of the coach, also the star quarterback, Flash Benny. You hear that, Mary? I'm playing two parts. Yes, Ham. Now, Kenny Baker will... I'm ignoring that, Mary. Thanks. Uh, Kenny Baker will be right in, Phil Harris will be halfback, Andy Devine will be fullback, and Don Wilson will be the rest of the team. <laughs> and remember, Don, football will not be made of jello. Then don't expect me to carry it. Hmm. Fine college spirit. Are we all set, fellas? Well, wait a minute. What am I going to be? Well, Mary, we're short of men, so you'll have to be one of the players. Okay, just call me Butch. <laughs> now, remember, Mary, you got to get out there and fight. Don't worry, I'll slug them. That's fine. What do you hear from the mob? <laughs> now, don't overdo it. Now, folks, the scene of our play is Flatfoot College, located... <laughs> Flatfoot College, located in the thriving little town of Art Supporter, Nebraska. Now, as the scene opens, the first half has just ended in the big game with Meatball Tech. The coach is giving his team a pep talk in the locker room. Curtain. Mute. Now, now listen, men. The score is nothing to nothing. You're playing like a lot of jellyfish. Now, this half, you'll have to get out there and fight. Fight for dear old Flatfoot. Are we going to let Meatball beat us? Are we going to let him cross our goal line? Are we going to let him win? We always do. (laughs) Well, this time it's going to be different. Now listen, men. We're up against a tough outfit. Keep your eyes open this half. Meatball's got something up their sleeve. I bet it's spaghetti. Quiet, Butch. (laughs) Now get this, all of you. We're going out there and we're going to win. I want all of you to be up on your toes and stay there. We're going to look awful silly. (laughs) And you, Harris, you're the most conspicuous player on the field. What's the idea of wearing a steel helmet? I ain't going to get my hair mussed. (laughs) Fine cooperation. Why can't you be like Devine here? He was in there slugging and biting every minute. Why, he's the most alert man on the team. Yeah, who are we playing? That's the stuff. <laughs> and you, Baker, listen to me. You're a disgrace to the good name of Flatfoot. You're out there playing, you don't even know the signals. I do, too. What are they? Red means stop and green means go. <laughs> now, why don't you remember that when you're out in the field? <laughs> and you, Livingston, step out here. Yes, Coach. <laughs> Cooch. I'm the couch. I mean, coach. 
Now get this, Livingston. You're supposed to be playing football all during the first quarter. You're up in the grandstand. What were you doing there? I had a date with a raccoon coat. Was there a man in it? I hope so. We're going out tonight. It's a fine team. What a bunch of nitwits. I resent that. Look who's resenting. <laughs> but it's true, there isn't a football player among you. Now, wait a minute, Coach. You're balling us out. What about Benny? He's the worst quarterback we've ever had. I'm getting to him. Come here, Benny. What happened to you? Were you asleep out there? I did the best I could, sir. You did the best you could. <laughs> Why, you're the laziest, dopiest player on the team. You ought to know. What? (laughs) Why, you're the worst guy. I'm sorry you're me. (laughs) Now get out there, boys, and fight. We can't lose unless Meatball keeps on cheating. Cheating? Yes, they have 11 men on their team. But, Coach, every football team has 11 men. They have? (laughs) Darn it, I was thinking of baseball. Now get out there in the field, boys, and you, Benny, snap into it. I'll try, sir. Now let's go out and win. Come on. Hey, coach, what's that in your hair? The alumni, they're always there. (laughs) Let's go, boys. Here we are, folks. The second half is about to begin. Meatball is already on the field. Here comes the Flatfoot team, folks, led by Flash Benny. Listen to their cheering section. Yay, Flatfoot! Rickety racks, coax, coax, knock the jaws and break their backs. And now, the Meatball cheering section. Yay, Meatball! Tear their helmets, tear their socks, send them home to the wooden box. Ah, folks, what a fine display of sportsmanship. The last half is about to start. The crowd is getting restless. There's the whistle. They're lining up. Meatball is about to kick off the flatfoot. Flatfoot receiving in B formation. And there's the kick. There goes the ball. Up, 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 up. It won't come down, folks. They're going to kick over again. They're lining up. And there's the kick. Oh, it's a beauty. There it goes. Kenny Baker of Flatfoot receives the ball, which immediately throws Kenny for a 10-yard loss. He's badly shaken. They're in a huddle. Let's hear what they're saying. Take it away, field. Now listen, fellas. We're on our own two-yard line. But don't get nervous. Yeah, what do we got to lose? Two yards. (laughs) Never mind, we got to make a game. I know. We'll try our secret pyramid formation play. You remember how it goes, Harris? No, hum a little of it. Now, look, Harris. Look at here. You get up on Baker's shoulder, and I'll throw the ball to you. So when they rush in, the ball will be out of reach. You get it, Baker? Yeah, I'll be killed. (laughs) Now, wait a minute. Hold everything. What's this guy doing in our huddle? He looks like a spy for meatball. I'm Don Wilson, your own center. Right guard, left guard, and right tackle. Oh. Where's my other tackle? Gone fishing. (laughs) What, without us worms? Now, come on, fellas. Let's line up. I'll call signal. I want to call signal. Oh, no. All you did last half was yell out your telephone number. (laughs) We want to get results. So do I. (laughs) Hey, Flash, what do you want me to do? Run out and get me a hot dog. Get me one, too. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. What are you stalling for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Quiet, meatballs. Don't get saucy. (laughs) Now, let's get going. Line up, fellas. Ready? Signal? 72, 23, hike! <laughs> there it is, folks. The famous pyramid formation play. Can't tell what happened yet. It was a loss. The ball's on the half-yard line. Baker is unconscious. And Harris. Where's Harris? Oh, there he is, hanging on the goalpost. <laughs> They're trying to revive Baker. Take it away, field. <laughs> Gee, this is awful. Poor Kenny, I wonder if he'll come, too. If I do, it'll be the first time. (laughs) Now, listen, fellas, let's try our famous hidden ball play. Lay off of that one, Flash. Yeah, last time we tried it, we couldn't find the ball for a month. (laughs) That's right. Here's your hot dog. Oh, give me a bite. Here, Piggy. Hey, Andy, run out and get me one. Oh, gee, I want to (laughs) play. Now, come on, fellas, we only got 99 yards to go. Gosh, are we go, going someplace? Quiet, Baker. Now, look, fellas. They keep pushing us back time after time. I know what we'll do. I'll carry the ball myself. Here we go again. Oh, yeah? Line up there. I'll show you. Attaboy, Flash. Attaboy. 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 Come on, now. Signal. 11, 22, 14. Bingo. <laughs> no, height. 
Hit him, fellas. There's the play, folks. The ball is snapped to Benny, and Kenny Baker is immediately knocked out. They got Benny. No, he twists and turns and crashes right through Meatball. There he goes down the field, folks. Wait, Benny is tackled. No, Benny's pants are tackled. <laughs> Benny is free. He's wearing pink underwear, folks. I am not. <laughs> He's a cinch for a touchdown. Wow, look at him run. 15 yards, 20 yards, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. <laughs> You pull over to the sideline. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> but officer, I'm on my way to a touchdown. Yeah, that's what they all say. Let's see your player's license. But gee, officer, I was only going 70. Well, the limit here is 35. And why didn't you stick out your hand when you passed that left end? Well, how do you think I knocked him down? Oh, a wise guy, eh? Yeah. Come on with me. I'm going to make this touchdown first. Oh, no, you're not. I'm not, eh? Then take this. <laughs> What a fight, folks! What a fight! Benny Beats with a right to the jaw. The cop comes with a stiff uppercut, which catches Benny off guard. What a suck! Benny is wobbly. He's down. He's trying to get up, but he can't make it. The count is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's out. Meatball wins ten to nothing. <laughs> Just a moment, folks. We'll bring the contestants to the microphone. The winner, Officer Murphy. It was a great fight, but the best man won. And now the loser, Flash Benny. I was robbed. <laughs> Put on the soup, Ma. I'll be right home. We'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. What? <laughs> what are you laughing at, Mary? Mama says good night, folks. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris this orchestra. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that all-around swell guy, a man I'm proud to call my friend, one of the sweetest fellows that I've ever been associated with, Jack Benny. Well, Jello again, this is Sugar Benny talking. <laughs> and Don, uh, tell me, what happened? My goodness, what's come over you? Oh, nothing, Jack, but after three years of working together so harmoniously, I feel that you deserve such a tribute from me. Oh, I see, Don. It took you three years to get that old feeling. <laughs> Are you sure you had no other reason for that lovely eulogy? I mean, no ulterior motive? Oh, no, Jack. I've always been very fond of you and regard you as a real pal. Oh, then the fact that there are only 12 more shopping days till Christmas had nothing to do with it? Huh? Absolutely not. I like you whether you buy me a gold cigarette case with my monogram on it or not. <laughs> hmm. Then you weren't hinting or anything? No, Jack. Oh, hi, Phil. Hello, Jack, old boy. Glad to see you, baby. <laughs> Baby? Hmm, he likes me, too. <laughs> you know, folks, it's funny how the Yuletide season can put wings on a rat. <laughs> <laughs> so you're glad to see me, huh? Yes, Jack, and I never saw you looking better. Boy, you look like a million dollars. Oh, I do, huh? Well, I'm not going to spend any of it, so don't be so complimentary. <laughs> You and Don have become great fans of mine all of a sudden. Jack, I always thought you were a great guy and a very talented artist. Then why didn't you tell me? What for? You know it. <laughs> oh, that's right. And furthermore, that compliment I paid you had nothing to do with the Christmas present. That's a lie. It is not. Then take a no. All right. May I almost drop dead if I'm lying. <laughs> that's fine, Phil. I'm going to nearly give you a present. <laughs> well, practically, thanks. Let me tell you something, Phil. The way you've been acting this past year and your general attitude toward me, I wouldn't spend over 50 cents on a gift for you. You wouldn't spend over 50 cents on New Year's Eve. Why, I would, too. <laughs> You'd have to get cockeyed first. Well, a little anesthetic helps. Anyway, I'm too smart to be fooled by you guys and you and your false compliments. Yeah. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Da -da -dum -dum. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, honey bunch. 
funny bunch. Uh, well, I suppose I'm a swell guy. You're glad to see me, and I look like a million dollars. You took the words right out of my hint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Why don't you ask me for a kiss now? Go ahead. It's near Christmas. You ask me for a kiss, and I'll turn you down so fast it'll make your head swim. That's more than your kiss would do. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I'm not so bad. How about the other night in the Trocadero when the lights went out? Was that you? Yes. Then I apologize. <laughs> oh, you apologize. Well, you wouldn't any other time. Why is it that you and Phil and Don are always so sweet to me right before Christmas and so nasty the day after? Look at the presents you give us. <laughs> <laughs> well, what am I supposed to do? Spend a fortune on gifts for this bunch? No, but you're not supposed to win them on a punch board. <laughs> A punch board? Yes. Say, if I can pick up a star sapphire for a quarter, I'm going to do it. <laughs> anyway, I like a little action when I spend money. I like to gamble. You like to gamble. You know I do. Didn't I try to make a bet with you on the Rose Bowl game? I'll say you tried. Well, why didn't you take him up, Phil? He only wanted California and 87 points. <laughs> I did not. Mary was standing right there with me in front of the Brown Derby when I suggested the bet. What did I say, Mary? I don't know. I was flirting with a sailor. <laughs> it's a fine thing, a girl like you standing on the street flirting with a sailor. You didn't even know his name. I did, too. What was it? S.S. Wyoming. <laughs> oh, well, you must have seen it someplace. Anyway, Phil, if you still want that bet... <laughs> If you still want that bet, you're going to have it. Go on, I only bet with gamblers. Oh, I suppose I'm not. Well, around O'Farrell's pool room in Waukegan, I was known as Nick the Greek. <laughs> yes, sir. Is that true, Jack? Why, Don, I used to bet 10, 15 cents on the turn of a card. And if I lost, ishkabibble. <laughs> you can't help yourself, Don. I'm a gambler and it's in my blood. Some gambler. He plays a slot machine with an axe. I do, huh? And to hear this gang talk, you think I was a regular miser. I'm not afraid to part with my money. Then why do you keep a police dog in your pocketbook? A police dog? Now, that's just trying to be funny, that's all. I'll show you. Now, look, folks, here's my pocketbook. You can see for yourself. Is there a police dog in it? <laughs> I've been framed! Oh, the low, underhanded trick. Play, Phil. Now, come clean, Mary. Did you have anything to do with this? <laughs> Very nice, Phil. Very nice. That was Dipsy Doodle, played by Phil Harris and his orc. Orc? Yes. We've got a long program tonight, Mary, so I'm abbreviating. <laughs> anyway, it was very good, Phil. I thought that number was terrific. Really, coloss. Thanks, Jack. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's the idea, Phil. You saved us half a sec there. <laughs> Didn't he, Mary? Oh, but death. Well, Livy, that's co oping <laughs> And now, folks, for our feature attraction of the evening and dramatic highlight, Kenny Baker will walk in late as usual. Huh? I'm not late. I was sitting here all the time. You were? Then why didn't you speak up? Because I didn't feel like it, that's why. What's the matter with you, Kenny? You're still fighting with your girl? Yes. Darn that love life of mine. <laughs> Well, it's interfering with your work, and I won't put up with it. Now what happened? Oh, I went over to her house last night, and when I got there, I found another fellow sitting on the sofa with her, and she said it was her brother. Well? And she was kissing him. Well, that's no crime. A girl can kiss her brother, can't she? Not like that. <laughs> well, Kenny, she's got another fellow. Maybe your technique is wrong. Don't you ever bring her a present or anything? Oh, sure. Every time I go to see her, I bring a package of gum. I oh. give her two sticks, and I take two sticks. Then what? We chew like the dickens. <laughs> well, that must be exciting. Uh... <laughs> I'll bet when the flavor's gone, he goes home. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine him sitting there, each chewing two sticks of gum. What happens to the extra stick, Kenny? The other guy gets that. <laughs> Well, you're too generous. I'll tell you what you do, Kenny. Why don't you buy her a nice gift for Christmas, you know? Something she can use, like perfume or stockings. Stockings? Yeah. Gee, I'd be ashamed to ask for those. Oh. <laughs> if you're afraid, Kenny, I'll buy them for you. No, I'll buy them. It might be a thrill. <laughs> sure it will, Kenny. You'll get a kick out of it. And now, folks, now that Kenny feels better, he's going to sing one of the... Uh... Pardon me. Come in. Special delivery for Jake Benny. <laughs> right here, boy, and my name is Jack. 
Glad to know you. Mine's Harry. <laughs> Harry, that's a fine name with that bald head of yours. You should see my chest. <laughs> well, button your shirt and give me that letter. Here you are. Goodbye. Hmm. Uh, who's the letter from, Jack? Wait a minute. It's from, uh... Hey, Mary, this letter's for you. It came in care of me. Uh, let's have it. Oh, Jack, it's from my mother. You haven't opened it yet. How do you know? She makes her own postage stamps. Oh. <laughs> well, let's hear what the old comedian has to say. <laughs> <laughs> Read it, Mary. I think your mother's a riot. Yeah, go ahead. We haven't got all night. Okay. Uh, Plainfield, New Jersey, December 10th. My dear daughter, Mary, hmm. I haven't written you in some time as I've been busy preparing for the holidays. I received your letter, and thanks very much for the check. It would have come in handy, but the landlord grabbed it on the first bounce. <laughs> well... Huh? Uh, right now, we're having a siege of zero weather here in Plainfield. It has been so cold the last two weeks, your father hasn't taken a bath since June. <laughs> June? My, my. Last Monday was the coldest day of the year. It was so bad, we had to milk the cow with an ice pick. Boy, that is cold. <laughs> uh, your Uncle Julius... <laughs> what is it, Mary? Oh, Dex, this is a scream. What? Your Uncle Julius was showing off yesterday... <laughs> Well, go on, Mary, read it. Your Uncle Julius was showing off yesterday and went outdoors without his earmuffs. Yes. So today he's going out without his ears. <laughs> well, it serves him right. Uh, this caused a lot of trouble as now we have to glue his glasses on. I bet he looks funny at that, huh? Uh, your cousin Otto was visiting us over the holidays, and he still walks in his sleep. So for Christmas, we are giving him pajamas with a cane to match. Oh, well, that was thoughtful, I think. Uh, tell Jack we bought him a beautiful Christmas present, too. Well? We are sending it COD, as Jack always likes to know what things cost. <laughs> I hope it's something cheap. Must close now, so Merry Christmas to you, Don, Phil, Kenny, and Nick the Greek. As usual, your mother. As usual. Mm. Well, that was all right, Mama. Still up to par there. No oh, kidding. say, Jack. Yes, Don? It's getting rather late. Now, what kind of a play are we going to do tonight? Oh, we won't have time for that, Don. Besides, I've got to get all my Christmas shopping done. I've been putting it off and off, and today I'm going to do it. There goes eight dollars. <laughs> I wish that was all. Don, announce Kenny's song and give him a good build-up, will you? Sure, I'll handle it. Uh, can I go with you, Jack? I got a lot of shopping to do, too. Okay, come along, Mary. So long, fellas. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, Bye, Jack. Bye. Bye. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we take you to one of Hollywood's biggest department stores, where we find... Gee, this store is crowded, everybody pushing and shoving. Here, give me your hand, Mary. Let go of me. My name's Kelly. <laughs> oh, pardon me, lady. Mary, Mary, where are you? Over here in men's garters. Well, take them off and stick to me. <laughs> now, let's see. What's first on my list? Uh, four shirts, six handkerchiefs, three pair of socks, two hand towels. Oh, darn it, this is my laundry list. <laughs> I sent some stuff out this morning. I thought you did your own. I was too busy this week. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I know what I want. Now, let me see. First, I want to get a little gold-plated keychain for Phil. Yeah, there's something he doesn't need. He does, too. He always carries a lot of keys in his pockets. That guy knows more doors. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's the counter right over here. Oh, yes. Uh, pardon me, sir. I'd like to buy a chain. Dog, watch, or daisy? <laughs> Look, and I want, I want a key chain, you know, for keys. How about a nice fountain pen? I don't want a fountain pen. I want a chain. How can you write a letter with a chain? Now, look, young man, I don't want to write a letter. Oh, you don't, eh? No. Guys like you that cause all the trouble in this country. <laughs> what trouble? Now, wait a minute. Do you want to sell me a chain or not? I wouldn't sell you a chain if you were an elk's tooth. <laughs> oh, come on, Mary. Let's go. Why don't you take the fountain pen, Jack? Phil could lead the orchestra with it. 
All right. How much is that fountain pen? Four dollars. All right. Here you are. Wrap it up, and I haven't got all day. Okay. Fresh guy. Hey, what's the idea of wrapping that pen in a blotter? It leaks a little. <laughs> Four dollars for a leaky pen. I ought to have you fired. You can't do it. Why not? I don't work here. <laughs> It's a fine store. Uh, let's go to the toy department, Jack. I want to get some dolls for a couple of kids I know. Yeah, I wonder where it is. Wait here, Mary. I'll ask the floor walker. Uh, pardon me, sir. Could you direct me to the toy department? The toy department? Yes. You take the elevator Where's and... the perfume counter, please? Uh, two aisles to the right, madame, and straight ahead. Now, what was it you wanted? Uh, the toy department. Oh, please. yes. The toy department. You take the elevator Excuse and... me. Where do I get Christmas cards? A third floor, center aisle. Thank you. Now, let's see. You wanted... Uh... The toy department, please. Oh, yes. Excuse me. You take the elevator... Oh, Floor Walker, have you seen my little boy? Madam, I've seen thousands of little boys. Well, that's not the one. Goodbye. <laughs> now, look, mister... Oh, pardon me. You wanted lampshades, didn't you? No, I wanted toys. The toy department. Oh, of course. Now, you take the elevator... I've taken it three times already. <laughs> my goodness. Well, don't get huffy about it. I'm not getting huffy, and I don't want any back talk. Got a good mind to report you. What's your name? Woo Woo Smith. <laughs> oh. Hey, Jack, I found out where it is. It's on the fourth floor. Okay, Mary, let's take the elevator. You Now, stay close to me. Huh? Oh, Jack, look. There's what? Kenny over by the ladies' hosiery counter. Oh, he finally did it. Where? Oh, yeah. Look at him blushing. Let's sneak over, huh? Now, young man, for the tenth time, what do you want? Well, I... Oh, you laugh. Oh, come on now, please. I'm very busy. All right, I want a pair of stockings. What kind? For legs. <laughs> oh, hello, Kenny. Oh, hello, Jack. Boy, what I've just gone through. <laughs> well, come along with us. We're going up to the toy department. You can get the stockings later. Okay. And here's the elevator, Jack. Yeah. Going up? Watch your step, please. Let's get in quick. It's awfully crowded here. Hey, you, stop pushing. I'm not pushing, lady. I'm just trying to get in the elevator. Well, you don't have to get rough about it, you communist. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. That's all you can expect from a guy that drives a Maxwell. <laughs> I'll ignore that. Oh, Kenny. Kenny. Hey, Mary, we lost Kenny. We did not. I'm standing on him. Standing on him? Yeah. Going up? Hang on to your hats. Second floor, flat iron, sofa pillows, submarines, aspirin tablets, and horseradish. <laughs> on up. Say, boy, this elevator is awfully crowded, isn't you it? You should see it on bank night. <laughs> it sure is packed. Breathe in, Jack, so I can breathe out. Quiet. Third floor, stuffed furniture, stuffed aisles, stuffed celery, and stuffed. <laughs> Next stop, Albuquerque. <laughs> what is this, a train? I think so. I got a cinder in my eye. That's my heel. Fourth floor, darning needles, knitting needles, hypodermic needles, and needles, California. Aren't the toys on this floor? There must be. This is the end of the line. Come on, Mary and Kenny. Going down all aboard. <laughs> Mary, get away from those tracks. Now, let's see. Where are the toys? Uh, there's a floor walker. Ask him. Oh, yeah. Excuse me, sir. Where's the doll department? The doll department? Yes. You won't tell anybody, will you? No. You can trust me. It's the third aisle to the left, center section. Look for the lady in black. <laughs> Gee, everybody's nuts around here. I know. Uh, can I help you, sir? Yes, ma'am. We're looking for something in dolls. Oh, we have a lovely assortment. Now, here's an original Shirley Temple doll. Oh, gee, that's cute, Jack. Yeah. When you lay it down, here's what happens. Mama, 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 mama. Oh, isn't that marvelous? Oh, she says the same thing every time. What do you want from a doll? The Gettysburg Address? <laughs> that isn't what I want anyway. Uh, look, Jack, here's a nice one. Poopy the Sailor. That's Popeye. Poopy. If you 
you're looking for a novelty, here's something brand new this year. An Andy Devine doll. An Andy Devine doll? Gee, Mary, it does look like Andy. Curly hair, big smile. Baggy pants and everything. Yeah. <laughs> How does it work, miss? Well, you wind it up like this and he talks. Listen. Hiya, Buck. Hiya, Buck. Hiya, Buck. Hiya, Buck. Oh, isn't he cute, Mary? Oh, he's awesome. Hiya, Buck. Hiya, Buck. Oh, it's all run down. Wind it up again, Mary. Woo-hoo-hoo. That tickles. Hey, Kenny, have you seen this doll at all? It does. Yeah. Hiya, Buck. Hiya, Buck. Hiya, Buck. Hiya, Buck. Hello, Andy. Hiya, Kenny. Hiya, Kenny. Hiya, Kenny. Hiya, Kenny. Hiya, Kenny. <laughs> Well, that's the most marvelous thing I've ever seen. I'll take this one, miss. Oh, Jack, look at Santa Claus over there sitting in that sleigh. Gee, he's all dressed up in red. Let's go over and see him. He looks so fat and jolly. Come on, we'll talk to him, huh? Oh, <laughs> this ought to be fun. Gee, I'm scared. Funny, I feel just like a kid again. Go ahead, talk to him, Jack. Oh, I don't want him. He might ask me if I've been a good boy. <laughs> Oh, go on, Jack. All right. Hello, Sandy Claus. Hello, stranger. <laughs> hey, hey Schlepperman. Quiet, I'm Chris Kringle now. Well, tell me, Schlepp, how do you happen to be Sandy Claus? I don't know. I came in here to buy a suit and they sold me a red one. Well, Schlepp, it is kind of loud there. I feel like a stoplight. <laughs> well, Mary, tell Santa Claus. What do you want for Christmas, eh? Can you put a mink coat in my stocking? Why, certainly. Boy, you are Santa Claus. So am I, and you know it. (laughs) Kenny, tell Santa Claus what you want. Oh, I'm too big for that stuff. Ah, speak up, Kenny boy. What would you like to find in your stockings Christmas morning? Me. My feet are cold. (laughs) Oh, you're too practical there. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, little boy. Look, look, Santa Claus is my papa. He is? Sure. Hey, Santa Claus, ain't you my papa? Go home, Pinkus. You're spoiling the illusion. <laughs> so that's your little boy. Well, tell me, Schlepp, what does your wife think of you being Santa Claus? My, my, Jackie, she's overdoing it. Every night when I come home for supper, she feeds me reindeer. Reindeer for supper? How do you like it? Fine, but the horns give me indigestion. <laughs> Well, we got to be running along. Say goodbye to Santa Claus. Goodbye, Goodbye Santa. Sandy. Goodbye, kiddies. Hey, Schlepp, when am I going to see you again? Well, I'll tell you, Jack. I'll be coming down your chimney when I come. I'll be coming down your chimney when I come. You'll be coming down my chimney. He'll be coming down your chimney. I'll be coming down when smoke gets in my eyes. He'll be coming down the chimney when he... Can't you hear me calling when the snow is gently falling? He'll be coming down the chimney when he... I would like a cup of tea when I bend you on my knee. He'll be coming down the chimney. He'll be coming down the chimney. I'll be coming down the chimney when I... Oh, 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 Chimney, 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 chimney. Figaro, 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 figaro. Ha, 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 ha. Well, we'll be waiting, Sandy Claus. Let's go home, kiddies. We're a little late, so good night, folks. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris in his orchestra. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the only adult in the world who wrote a letter to Santa Claus, Jack Benny. Thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I would never have told you about writing that letter if I thought you were going to publicize it. I only wrote to Santa Claus for sentimental reasons, that's all. Sentimentalisms? Yes, I've been corresponding with him for years, and I'm not going to break it off now. (laughs) I merely asked him where that sled was he promised me 35 years ago. (laughs) Oh, but Jack, you're too old for that sort of thing. Listen, Don, this is the time of year when we should all be kids. It's the only way to enjoy the holiday season. Well, I guess you're right, Jack. So you're acting like a kid these days, huh? Am I? Why, this morning I wouldn't eat my spinach till the cook gave me a nickel. <laughs> and you know what I did right after breakfast? What? I went out and played marbles with the kids. Adolf Manju. <laughs> 
And, Don, you know how kids are. We even got into a big fight. Oh, you and Adolf. Oh, uh, now, what were you fighting about? Well, he said he had bigger bags under his eyes than I had. <laughs> And you know, Don, that's a lie. <laughs> Imagine you two children fighting like that. Didn't anyone try to stop you? Well, yes, his mother came out and was going to give us a spanking, but she had too much respect for our gray hair. Yeah, <laughs> uh, by the way, Don, not meaning to change the subject, I mean, uh, well, I won't be seeing you again until after Christmas, so I, well, I thought uh, I brought you a little present, you know, a little remembrance, and I hope you like it. Oh, you didn't have to do that. I know, Don, but here you are. Gee, thanks, Jack. That's awfully sweet of you. What is it? Oh, nothing much. Just a little novelty I picked up. It's a combination electric razor and shoe brush. <laughs> oh, that is a novelty. I'll say it is. You can shave and get a shine at the same time. Next so week. you can? Yeah, of course. You'll have to hang your shoes on your ears. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cute gadget, isn't it? Oh, I can hardly wait to try it. But you know, Jack... This really makes me feel awfully cheap. Well, I, uh, you know, I was so busy this week that uh, I forgot to get something for you. Oh, what the... What? <laughs> oh, I, I'm really frightfully sorry, Jack, but it just slipped my mind. Oh, that's all right, Don. Say it could happen to anybody. You just forgot, that's all. Yes, I'm afraid I did. You won't hold that against me, will you? No. <laughs> If you walk in here some Sunday night and find another announcer, this had nothing to do with it, believe me. <laughs> oh, Phil. Hey, Phil. Yes, Jack. I don't suppose I'll be seeing you either until next Sunday, so I brought you a little something as a Yuletide remembrance. I, I hope you like it. Ah, oh, Jack. Here you are, kid, and Merry Christmas. Thanks, Jack. That's awfully nice of you. What is it? Well, Phil, I know how fussy you always are about your appearance, so I... Bought you something for your hair. If it's a ribbon, you can keep it. <laughs> it's not a ribbon. It's a new hair tonic and dressing. Sort of a scalp mayonnaise. <laughs> That's fine. I'll have to comb my hair with a salad fork. <laughs> That's the idea, Phil. Here you are, kid, and Merry Christmas. Same to you, old boy. But you know, Jack, you're giving me this lovely gift makes me feel like a heel. Why, Phil? Well, I intended to get something for you, but I kept putting it off and putting it off, and I didn't get you a thing. You didn't? Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> well, don't worry about it, Phil. No kidding, Jack. I feel rotten about it. Oh, forget it, kid. After all, it's the thought that counts, and I... I know you were thinking of me. Yes, I was. That's all that matters. Anyway, Jack, I'll make up for it. Next Christmas, I'll buy you a real present. If you're here, Phil. If you're here. <laughs> anyway, it's more fun to give than to receive. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. What are you doing? I'm playing Santa Claus on a one-way street. <laughs> Well, Mary, I see you're wearing that little charm bracelet I sent you yesterday. Do you like it, hmm? Oh, Jack, it's simply gorgeous. Uh, hey, Phil Down, look what Jack gave me. Hey, Mary, that's beautiful. Boy, that's all right. And look what it says on the inside. Genuine 14 karat gold plated. That's a misprint or I've been robbed. What are those charms there, Mary? Well, here's a little mermaid, uh -huh. and here's a little fish, a little frog, a seahorse, a crab, a lobster. How do you like it, Mary? Fine, only I'll have to keep it underwater. <laughs> and, oh, Jack, here's a charm I can't make out. What is it? That's the price tag. Take it off. <laughs> Let's see that tag, Mary. Never mind that. I paid $198 for that bracelet. If you did, the decimal point's in the wrong place. <laughs> sentiment towards you, and a happy Christmas, Mary. Thanks. You know, Jack, I hate to say this, and I suppose I'm the only one. Here I go again, folks. <laughs> but I didn't buy anything for you. I thought of everything. I was going to get you some gloves, but I didn't know what size you are. Well, that's natural. That's natural. And yeah. then I was going to get you some handkerchiefs, but I didn't know the size of your nose. <laughs> well, that could happen, too, yes. Yeah. And then I was going to get you a box of cigars. But you didn't know the size of my mouth, I know. <laughs> that's right. See, I'm so ashamed of myself. Oh, don't feel that way, Mary. And listen, fellas, I didn't give you these presents expecting anything in return. So don't worry your pretty little heads about it. And now, folks, we, uh... Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Once a year I come to you and bring you greetings, good and true. Well, 
And now that my good deed is through, I'll say farewell and nuts to you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> You know, Mary, I'd like to hang that guy on my Christmas tree. Play it. That was She's Tall, She's Tan, She's Terrific from the Cotton Club Parade, played by the man who thinks of me every Christmas and his orchestra. And say, Phil, before I forget it, I brought a, I, uh, brought a little present for the boys in your band. I didn't want to forget them either. Here it is, a pint of good old California wine. <laughs> A pint for each of them? No, no, for one bottle for the whole gang. Okay, put a nipple on it and I'll serve it. <laughs> oh, just pass it around. They can handle it. <laughs> Say, Phil, uh, I got presents for the boys, too. Well, thanks, Mary. Uh, what, what have you got for them, Mary? Well, I need little sweaters for all their instruments. <laughs> Oh, isn't that you? There's nothing like a turtleneck saxophone. But <laughs> well, what did you get for the boys? The boys? Yeah. Oh, I knitted them socks, but they turned out to be mittens. Oh, that's fine. Imagine them putting mittens on their feet. <laughs> what are you laughing at? When they wave at me, they'll fall down. <laughs> well, anyway, Mary, your intentions were good, and that's what really counts. Oh, hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack. Season's greetings. Same to you, Kenny. You know, Jack, this being so near Christmas... I was thinking of you all week. You were? Yeah, what did you buy me? <laughs> oh, that was subtle. Well, Kenny, I've given everyone else a present, and I just got in. I've got one for you, too. Here it is. What is it? It's a musical collar button. <laughs> no, really, no, it is. A musical, every time it rolls under the dresser, it plays Here Am I. <laughs> From the picture of the same name. Yes. <laughs> I hope you like it, Kenny. Gee, I can't wait till I lose it. Well, don't you dare. It cost me a lot of money. Huh? Well, thanks, Jack. And oh, I don't know how to tell you this, but uh, I, well, I feel like a... A heel, I know. I know. <laughs> Listen, Kenny, you didn't have to get me anything. You don't have to worry about that. Say, what did you get for your girl? A traveling bag. She asked me to get her one. A traveling bag? What does she want with that? She's going to elope with some guy. <laughs> Why, Kenny, do you know what elope means? No. It means she's going to run away and get married. What's she running for? <laughs> What's she running for? Tonight, we will present the... Come in. Package for Jack Benny. Oh, a package. It must be for my father. He's the only one who thinks of me, anyway. Uh, right here, boy. Oh, wait a minute. Here's a nickel for you. Thanks, Diamond Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh guy. Gee, I, I wonder what's in this package. Huh? Why don't you look at the card? The card? Oh, yes. Uh, the, uh, well, I'll be... Read it, Jack. Oh, gee. To our pal Jack. Merry Christmas from Don, Phil, Mary, Kenny, Andy, and Schlepperman. Say, what is this, anyway? Surprise! 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 Oh, hey, this is a surprise. Huh? Open it, Jack. You'll love it. Gee, you kind of took me unawares there for a... Gosh, for a minute, I thought that... Come on, the... Jack, open it. Okay. <laughs> I didn't expect this, fellas. I... Oh, my goodness. It's a Lollapalooza, huh, Jack? Gosh. Pretty snappy, eh? Oh, I can hardly talk. Gee, fellas, what a present. Twin waffle iron. <laughs> and electric, too. <laughs> oh, fellas, you shouldn't have done it. <laughs> Jack? Oh, boy, now I'll never have to wait for that extra waffle. <laughs> oh, John, I'm so happy I could cook. <laughs> we knew you'd like it. Like it? I adore it. But if I put on weight, fellas, it'll be your fault. <laughs> Gee, this is a swell dip. Sing, Kenny. Mary, how do you whip up a strawberry waffle batter? Do you know? <laughs> That was Once in a While, sung by Kenny Baker, and very good, Kenny. I'm not saying that just because you chipped in to buy my gift, either. And say, Kenny, I'll give a big waffle party next week, and you're all invited. You know, I never ate one. What's a waffle, Jack? Well, Kenny, a waffle is a sort of a... Well, it's a cross between a pancake and a doily. <laughs> is that clear, Kenny? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. 
And now, folks, as this holiday season is dedicated for the most part to the happiness of little children, our play tonight is for the kiddies of America. So this evening, we are going to present our version of that famous fairy tale, Little Red Riding Hood. Good evening. Hmm. Now, I'll play the part of Old Man Hood. Uh, Mary will be my daughter, Red. And Kenny will be my son, Robin. Robin Hood, are you laughing, kiddies? If they are, it's something else. <laughs> Mary. Now, let's see, Don and Phil. Oh, yes, Don Wilson will be a tree in the woods. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Phil Harris will be a woodchopper who cuts down Wilson. Take it easy, Phil. You know how ticklish I am. <laughs> now, let's see. Oh, yeah, well, Phil will use a dull axe. It's all right. Yeah, now, let's see. We got our play almost cast. Oh, my goodness, I forgot the most important part of all, the wolf. Now, who'll be the wolf? Say, Jack, I'll take a fling at it. No, Phil, you're more the rat type. <laughs> You know what? I'll be the wolf myself. I'll play two parts. Oh! Did that sound like a wolf, Mary? It sounded more like a toothache. <laughs> All right, I'll be a wolf with a toothache. And now, folks... Say, Jack, who's yeah. going to be the grandmother? I won't tell. That's a surprise. So now, folks, we're going to present Little Red Riding Hood, or Mr. Wolf Goes to Town. The scene opens in the farmhouse of Mr. and Mrs. Riding Hood, where we find the elderly couple busy decorating their Christmas trees. Curtains. Music. Well, Ma, that tree, uh, tree is shaping up mighty pretty. I hope the children will like it. Oh, they will. Ouch! Doggone it, Ma, I wish you put your glasses on. That's the third time you try to pin that star on my nose. I can't help it. It looks like a branch. Well, that ain't exactly a freckle you're inhaling through. <laughs> We only have one more thing to hang up on the top of the tree. Hold this ladder while I get up there. Hold it steady now. I got her, Pa. It sure looks pretty. <laughs> Ain't been so high since last New Year's Eve. <laughs> Hold steady there, Ma. I'm a-holding. Consarn it. You fell down, Pa. Oh, did I? <laughs> You must be psychic. It's all your fault, Ma. Why didn't you hold the ladder? I did, and I'm still holding it. That's the floor lamp. I told you to put your glasses on. <laughs> Doggone, if this wasn't our anniversary, I'd slug you. If you want to make the next one, you better not. <laughs> now, listen, Ma, don't you threaten me, or you'll be looking at Santa Claus through a piece of beefcake. Come in. Hello, Pa. Hello, Ma. Hello, son. What's the idea of rapping on the door? Why didn't you walk right in? I thought you and Ma might be necking. <laughs> oh, we're too old for that. Speak for yourself, you and me, Nick Casanova. <laughs> Pipe down, Ma, or I'll put termites in your bustle. <laughs> well, son, are you through with your chores? Yep. Did you milk the cow? Sure did. I creamed her, too. Some farmer. Where's your sister, Red? She's I mean, bed. where's your sister, Red? <laughs> She's outside making a snowman. Doggone that girl. I wish she'd come in. The wolves are thicker than thieves around here. Hello, Red. Hello, Pa. Hello, Ma. Hello, Dolores. Dolores? That's the cat. Oh. I never knew her name. We were worried about you, Red. Yes, out there all alone with all those wolves. Any of them come close to you? How do you think I got this fur coat? Hmm. That's good-looking fur. It feels nice and silky. Ow! Ow! Guess I didn't kill him enough. <laughs> Have you heard from Grandma today? Grandma? No, she's been sick in bed with a cold. I wonder how she's coming along. Why don't you call her up and find out? I think I will. Where's the phone? On the Christmas tree. Darn it. Oh, yes. Operator, get me broken down, 8400. I hope she's better. Here's your poppy. Thanks. Oh, hello, Grandma. How are you feeling? I feel terrible, son. How are you? <laughs> your cold seems to be getting worse. Got any chills? This ain't the rumba I'm doing. 
Grandma, you just stay in bed and take care of yourself. I'll send Red over with some hot soup for you. Okay, have her bring some cigars, too. <laughs> All right, goodbye. Goodbye, son. What kind of soup we got, Ma? Turtle, here it is. Turtle? Is that mock or green? Looks like mud to me. <laughs> it is. Now, Red, you get your basket and take those vittles over to your grandma's. Yes, and be careful going through the woods. Okay, so long, Pa. So long, Ma. Goodbye, Dolores, Joe, and Pete. Joe and Pete? Dolores had kittens. <laughs> Dinged if she didn't, and right in my hat, too. <laughs> Now, be careful, Red. Remember, don't talk to any wool. I wouldn't speak to anything less than a silver fox. I know that. Goodbye, daughter. Goodbye. Oh, boy, what a night. Listen to that wind howl. And listen to the snowfall. See, it's fun walking through the snow. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Getting dark. Who's that I see looking in yon bush? <laughs> it's me, kitties. I'm a wolf now. Ow! Hello, little girl. Hello. Are you a wolf? I ain't Renfrew of the Mounted. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going, my little chickadee? I'm going to my grandmother's with a basket of food. Food, eh? <laughs> What's in there? Hot breast beef, strawberry pie, and coconut custard. <laughs> What, no hopple? That's ten cents extra. Oh. Anything else in the basket? Well. Now, little Red Riding Hood. Hey, Red, where are you? You ran away. Ha, ha, ha. Curses spoiled again. Snarl, snarl. I know what I'll do. I'll take a shortcut through the woods and beat her over to her grandmother. And when I get there, I'll eat her up. <laughs> are you shivering, kiddies? <laughs> the place. <laughs> and now to get in. Who's there? It's Little Red Riding Hood. Gosh, you've got a cold, too. Come in. Hello, Grandma. Oh, you're not Little Red Riding Hood. You're a wolf. Yes, I'm a wolf, and I'm going to eat you up. Yum, 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 yum. Now, hold still. It'll be over in a minute. Shall I take my shoes off? No. I like shoes and everything. Here you go. I just ate Grandma, Kitty. Darn no shoes. That must be Little Red Riding Hood now. I know what I'll do. I'll put on this nice hat and get under the covers. That'll fool her. I'll talk just like Grandma. She'll never recognize me. Come in, Red! <laughs> Hello, Grandma. I brought you a basket of food. Hot soup and egg. Goody, goody. But first, I want to talk to you. Come over here by the bed, my dear. That's it. Why, Grandma, you look so strange. I hardly know you. <laughs> oh, Grandma, what big eyes you have. The better to see you with, my dear. And, oh, Grandma, what a long nose you have. The better to win races with, my dear. <laughs> And, oh, Grandma, what rotten jokes you have. <laughs> Never mind that. When are you going to get the teeth? Right now. Oh, Grandma, what big teeth you have. The better to eat you with, my dear. You're a wolf. Where's my Grandma? I swallowed her and you're next. Help! Help! Oh, watch out there! Watch out there! I'm coming, baby! <laughs> Boiled again. Quick, shoot the wolf. Shoot him. Shoot him. Shoot him nothing. I'm going to take my axe and chop him right in two. <laughs> Thanks, Grandma. You saved my life. <laughs> Yes, I am, Mary. I've got a business deal on with them. Uh, what's it about, Jack? Oh, you find out. Is it animal, vegetable, or mineral? I ain't talking. La, 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 la. This mystery will be continued next Wednesday. Good night, folks. <laughs>